to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening. Welcome to the July 1st Selectman's Meeting, 2019. And tonight we're going to have, um, turn it over to the Chief, I think. Thank you, sir. Tonight, uh, uh, with your assistance and, and that board, Mr. Welch, we appreciate the time to come here and recognize two of our firefighters um, who are being promoted to the Captain and Lieutenant. So this evening, ladies and gentlemen who are here with us, thank you very much for attending this, this ceremony. Uh, this is an active board of selectmen meeting tonight, so we're going to do the procession, and then I ask that you kindly up and escort out while they conduct their business. They're going to give us a five-minute window to do that, so we'll stop right now, if that's all right with you, Mr. Chair. This evening, we're uh, very happy to bring forward Lieutenant Gannon and promote him to Captain Gannon. Sean Gannon has been with the Hampton Fire Department for 22 years, previously serving in communities in both New Hampshire and Massachusetts. He lives here in Hampton. Um, along with his wife and kids, they've all been part of the school system, they've been part of the community. Sean's a teacher at the New Hampshire State Fire Academy, and uh, this evening we're very proud to have him step forward. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. From the town of Hampton in the county of Rockingham, to Sean Gannon of Hampton, New Hampshire, in the county of Rockingham. Whereas there's a vacancy in the office of fire captain in said town, and whereas we, the subscribers, have confidence in your ability and integrity to perform the duties of said office, we do hereby appoint you, the said Sean Gannon, as fire captain of said town. And upon taking the oath of office and having the appointment and the certificate of said oath of office recorded by the town clerk, you shall have the powers perform the duties, and be subject to the liabilities of such office until another person shall be chosen and qualified in your stead. Given under my hand this first day of July 2019 for at Welsh Town Manager. If I can have you raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Sean Gannon, I, Sean Gannon do, solemnly swear do solemnly swear that I will bear faith and true allegiance, and bear faith and true allegiance to the United States of America and the state of New Hampshire and will support the constitutions thereof. And will support the constitutions thereof. So, help me God. so help me God. I, Sean Gannon, I, Sean Gannon do, solemnly and sincerely do solemnly and sincerely swear and affirm, swear and affirm that I will faithfully and impartially Faithfully and impartially discharge and perform, discharge and perform all the duties encumbered on me, all the duties encumbered on me as a fire captain, as a fire captain according, according to the best of my abilities, according to the best of my abilities, agreeably to the rules and regulations, the rules and regulations of this constitution, of this constitution and the laws of the state of New Hampshire. And the laws of the state of New Hampshire. So help me God. So help me God. Yeah. So I just want to take a second uh, to thank everybody for coming. Um, the current and the retirees from the Fire Department, thank you for the support. Uh, thank you for your professionalism and everything you do every day. I really look forward to working with every and one of you in the future here. Next couple days, actually. Um, I want to thank my family for being here, my daughter, Amber and Shea, and my wife, Heidi, especially. She's been here for, with me for my 30 plus years of my fire service career. And with you. Thank you. So, some of you know this 
some of you don't, Captain Gannon has um, has started his career in the fire service. He's not new to being an officer. He spent 11 years as a lieutenant. Uh, his first day as captain, I think he called out. No, no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he was on vacation. So his actual first day starting our group is going to be on the 4th of July, which to anybody who's been in hands on the 4th of July knows that's like our Super Bowl, so good luck, sir. <laughs> Next, we have a, uh, a firefighter of nearly 20 years with the Hampton Fire Department. He's somebody who's gained a significant amount of respect with his peers and in through the uh, community as well. He's been a member of this community for a significant amount of time. Uh, he's a, a, a member of the, or a, a discharge member, honorable discharge member of the United States Coast Guard. And like I said, uh, nearly 20 years has brought him to this point in his career where Buck Frost will become the lieutenant on Group 4. Sir, if you're ready, please come <clears throat> From the town of Hampton in the county of Rockingham to Buck Frost of Hampton, New Hampshire in the county of Rockingham, whereas there is a vacancy in the office of fire lieutenant in said town, and whereas we the subscribers have confidence in your ability and integrity to perform the duties of said office, we do hereby appoint you, the said Buck Frost, as fire lieutenant of said town. And upon taking the oath of office and having this appointment and the certificate of said oath of office recorded by the town clerk, you shall have the powers, perform the duties, and be subject to the liabilities of such office until another person shall be chosen and qualified in your stead. Given under my hand this first day of July, Fred Welch, town manager. If you could raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Buck Frost. Frost. Do, solemnly swear Do solemnly swear that I will bear faith and true allegiance to the United States of America and the state of New Hampshire and will support the constitutions thereof. So help me God. So help me God. I, Buck Frost, I, Buck Frost do, solemnly and sincerely do solemnly and sincerely swear and affirm, swear and affirm that I will faithfully and impartially Discharge and, perform. Discharge and perform. All the duties encumbered on me. All the duties encumbered on me. As a fire lieutenant. As a fire lieutenant. According to the best of my abilities. According to the best of my abilities. Agreeably to the rules and regulations. Agreeably to the rules and regulations. Of this constitution. Of this constitution. And the laws of the state of New Hampshire. And the laws of the state of New Hampshire. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. <laughs> right now we're heading in a really great direction I'm uh, very proud and honored to serve with everybody there so uh, this show of support is amazing so thank you all for coming out and um, have a good night thank you. <laughs> as they sign their lives away as they 
Uh, you know, one of the things that has happened already, Lieutenant Cross took over yesterday, and I had sent him an email, and I had said, well, it looks like Mother Nature is smiling upon you, because yesterday morning was a gorgeous day. Somewhere about mid-afternoon, I sent him a text, and I said, I think I jinxed you, because you're kind of like this one. <laughs> so, sir, thank you very much. Thank you very congratulations. much. Congratulations. Sir, congratulations. Pleasure to have you both here doing your, the jobs that you are absolutely made for right now. Um, what we, like I said, what we'd like to do, if you could, we're going to all leave and allow them to get on with the meeting. So thank you all very much for attending. A state Homeland Security grant. Fiery from the Department of Safety Commissioner Quinn and the Assistant um, Commissioner Perry Plummer to discuss ocean rescue safety and where all of the communities on the state um, ocean side uh, where they lie. We were able to get together in the same room over at the police station to discuss what we have as capabilities both with equipment and personnel and what they're trained for. The request was made to us to let them know what we need. And quite simply, what we needed was training, ongoing training. As I've sat before you before, we've talked about the fact that learning how to do something is fine, but ongoing training is a necessity. Yeah. When it comes to rescue swimmer and rescue boat operator especially, these are perishable skills that are only used for a small season. So um, Assistant Commissioner Plummer was instrumental in working on getting money from State Homeland Security grants. He asked what we would need for funding, and Deputy Cutting was able to give a good score for where we would stand with our highest um, capabilities. And we told him it would be about $31,000. So he called us back, I think it was a week later, and he said, I have $31,000 and I'd like to give it to you. 
So what we'd like to do is ask your permission to accept the grant for $31,000 for backfill and overtime, no match required, and this would allow us to do rescue swimmer and rescue boat operator training. That would be for backfill and overtime. They also found funds that would pay for the course. This is going to be Ocean Rescue Systems, which is the same company that we've used in the past. Joe Mokri is the proprietor and the main teacher. And it's the same person that we've used. It's the same training that we've had. It would be a refresher course. There would be two eight-hour courses for refresher, which would be boat operator eight hours, rescue swimmer eight hours. Two of our people are um, not qualified yet, so they would be able to take the entire week to do the full level of training. This will take place the week of July 8th. And as the funds have it, they and it's a state homeland security grant, they have also allowed us to invite in some of our community partners, meaning Seabrook, uh, Rye, and Newcastle, who have all expressed interest in coming in. So the total grant, as far as I can remember, was $31,000, correct? So if, if that's all right with you, we would like to ask permission to accept the state homeland security grant for $31,000 with no match. Sounds great. Comments? Mrs. Wolsey. Yeah, I have a couple of questions. Um, you're not just responsible for the fire department on land because we run the boat for the fire department. Uh, is the state doing anything? You, your your uh, responders are at risk in all this stuff. And in most communities, you don't have to contend with water rescues, and you've got a busy summer down there. Uh, is the state helping out at all? Well, the state is providing a grant, so that's pretty good. Uh, additionally, they also have the lifeguards. The lifeguards are there on a daily basis, and they're there doing rescues um, on a continual basis. Last summer, I believe they had 125 rescues. They also helped locate, uh, uh, it was over 200 children. Or, or parents, I should say. The children were found and the parents were lost at that point. Um, so they're doing their dailies when it comes to that. Um, Deputy Cutting was present last week. If you want to talk about the radio situation and what they've done. Sure. We, we've always had the ability to talk with the lifeguards, um, programming a channel into our radio to talk directly okay. with them just to um, increase the efficiency and coordination um, when we respond to those rescues. They did have a problem with their radio system. Uh, last week I went down and met with um, De uh, excuse me now, Chief Murphy, right. um, their radio technician, uh, myself, Captain Jeff Kelly, and we were able to resolve that issue so we have restored communications. So one of the things with the state lifeguards in addition is that um, as, as we as a fire department provide mutual aid, they do too. And if you recall last year in a tragic event, we lost two people off the coast of Seabrook and uh, Hampton Fire responded both with the Marine One and an engine company. Um, our rescue swimmers were deployed in the water. The engine company was working hard on the patients. And in the process, we also contacted the Hampton lifeguards. They went down with a jet ski, and one of the lifeguards jumped off the jet ski and actually assisted in getting in the male victim during that. Yeah. So they're, they're playing the role out front on the surf side rescue. We can do that as, as well as deep water rescue with the boats and in the harbor. If you recall, too, there was a, I do believe that I spoke about this um, when the bridge was up one time. It happened that one of the captains, Captain Kelly, was on the bridge and he heard somebody yelling for help. And he identified the fact that a guy had gotten swamped by a wave in his canoe and needed assistance. So between our engine company and the boat company and the lifeguards, we all worked to get him and his vessel, the canoe, back to shore. Um, so we work integral with that. With Hampton especially, we're part of a larger mutual aid group, yeah. so Seabrook, Hampton, Northampton, Rye, uh, as far away as Portsmouth, Salisbury, and even Newburyport. So there's a lot of different opportunities for us to work, especially out on the water. Um, we've seen it where we've been called as far as the Isle of Shoals to assist Rye with their situations. Um, they're all bringing different components and pieces to the party right now. Mm -hmm. Rye now has a jet ski with a couple of swimmers, mm -hmm. but we have the, the highest level of um, training and ability to serve right now. Wow. Now, now, don't laugh at me, I but last year, I, I, or earlier this year, there was talk about having trouble getting lifeguards down at the beach, and somebody mentioned bringing lifeguards in from China. News to me. If that happens, will you have interpreters, I hope? They're fully staffed at this point. I know that I spoke about oh, them. Okay. Yeah. Just, that is a constant concern. I just wondered about that a yeah. little bit. Okay. 
I have no questions. That's excellent news. I'm glad to see that you yeah. got the figure that you asked for. That's very nice to see. And I Thank think you. that um, a lot of people can see the relationship that you have with the lifeguards down on the beach, and it's a good one. You guys support each other. So Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's great, I think. Ocean Rescue Systems, they're really active, aren't they? They certainly are. They're all over the, mm -hmm. I see them all over the Northeast. And did they just do something up in Northampton? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they the other did. day I saw them up there doing that. So that's great, and that, that's a great program. No, I'd be happy to make the motion to accept the grant on behalf of the fire department of $31,000. We have I'll second. in a second yeah. from Mr. Waddell. All those in favor, unanimous. Super. Thank you all so much. Have a Thank great you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Next, we have uh, community um, comment, or not, I mean, public, public, public comment, comment, and then community announcements. Anyone want to join us? Anne, I looked at it wrong. Good evening, Charlie. Also, uh, Charlie Preston, 47 Glade Path. I wanted to touch on the JOP. I hope we're making progress, because I know it's always been a big secret. You know, I'm a very patient man. I've been waiting for a copy of the MOU or the MOA or the JOP since James Barrington. But my patience is wearing thin. The Ashworth Ave lot. For me, I have to come here multiple times in multiple years to get a lot open when it's plowed. It was done this year. It's just wrong that it wasn't in the past, but we're going forward. State parks. I really hope we got some, you know, something in the JOP. I hope you got some good news for us. But the, for the state to charge in April and October and give out 286 tickets in April and even worse, 450 in October, it's just wrong. For the town and for the state to get greedy in the pre and post season mm -hmm. when school is in is wrong. For the town and state to look at tickets as a revenue source, as a revenue stream, is wrong. I've worked long and hard and my agenda being to be user-friendly. Let's not shoot ourselves in the foot. I came in here on April Fools and asked this board to fight for both the businesses and the residents in the town of this town in the off season. If the town and the state help, then it will come back to you. I don't know if you, you know, worked on that with the, with the state. I went to the community meeting Mm. this spring and I would like to see if you know if we have any action I don't know if you're gonna tell us that I realize there's no back and forth here but uh, you know I asked you on April 1st to, to fight for us fight for the businesses and the people who live down there and mm. there's no reason to push people out of that lot those lots down there in April in May and make them scatter for the few spots that we have on the leaded streets down there so I, I hope we can go forward and get a little action there thank you very much thanks Charlie uh, other comments? Good evening. Dave Hartnett, uh, 339 Ocean Boulevard. Um, for those who don't know me, I'm a 43-year resident of Hampton. My three children grew up and went to school here. I'm a business owner down on the beach and in town. And I'm the son and the nephew of five uh, first responders. I've come here tonight to express my outrage on how some of the members of the select board and the budget committee have conducted themselves the past couple of months. There's a viciousness I have not seen in local politics since I grew up in Boston during forced busing. Never seen anything like it in my life. But your behavior the last two months has been appalling. It is clear to me there are personal <coughs> uh, issues behind the scenes about the deputy town manager's position. But before I decided to speak, I decided to do some research and see how we got here. I see that Jamie Sullivan received a 5-0 vote back on September 29th from the town selectman, town manager Fred Welch. That said, that hiring would be substantially decrease the town payroll. Welch went on to say, I've already started developing an extensive list of things that needed to be done, and I haven't been able to get to them. Among those items, he listed an employee handbook for the town's employees, as well as detailed tasks and projects. On the night the matter of the assistant town manager was voted, voted on, Selectman Woosley moved to approve the position and would unanimously pass. Ms. Woosley then stated, we're going to make you work hard. We appreciate your expertise. 
So last week in public comment when it was stated we did not need the position and Mr. Welch was the only person who could do the job, I then decided to research Mr. Sullivan's qualifications. This is what I found. He's a 30-year veteran of the Hampton Police Force. During his time as Chief of Police, he was appointed by Governor Hanson to the Council of Standards for Trading. He was president of the Emergency Response Team. He's a graduate of the FBI National Academy, has, no, has negotiated numerous town contracts, has been acting town manager in Mr. Welch's absence. He's obtained a master's degree in business administration. And if that wasn't enough, he was the coach of the wrestling team. And after watching how you people handle him, I, th I think that might come in handy for him down the road. Amongst the half truths and lies during the past two months, we keep hearing about how upset the people in town are. And you're right, they are talking. But they're not talking about what you've been saying on Channel 22. They want you to live up to the agreement you signed with that man. It's upsetting the way that you people are acting. We live in a great town. We have great people. We have great resources. Fire, police, DPW, and this is the stuff that you decide to waste your time on. Honor that man's contract. Do the right thing. Other comment? Dave Morrison, 30 Kings Highway, Hampton. Uh, I want to reference the uh, June 17th Board of Selectmen's meeting. First of all, I want to say that the Board of Selectmen's meeting of June 17th was an embarrassment for the town of Hampton. The meeting looked more like a legislative session in the Philippines than a Hampton town meeting. The nasty talk interruptions, talking over each other, and the personal innuendos need to stop. Secondly, I've known Mr. Sullivan since he was a coach at the Winnick uh, wrestling team and when my daughter was playing on the girls' basketball team. Everybody around there loved him. The school department had no problem with Mr. Sullivan, and you shouldn't either. It appears to me that this is second and third party information, and personal matters should be handled in a closed session. Making accusations that a second and third party uh, should be handled in a closed session. Uh, anything that's not verified or, or, or actually part of the town record, this shouldn't be talked about in, in public. You should use it in a town meeting, where in a closed meeting, where you can talk about it freely, but not over the public uh, channel 22. Grandstanding in front of the Channel 22 camera should stop and not be a part of this board. So I ask you to please stop this public display. And then thirdly, I, I don't understand the, town, the time that was spent two weeks ago on the Coakley landfill. It's located in Northampton and Rye. If we have concerns about the state involvement with taxes, et cetera, then get the state representatives in here, your, your senators, and let, let them talk about the, the, uh, the, the state involvement with, the, with everything that's going on there. We don't have any business talking about it down here. If someone wants to talk about it or, or do something about it, that's fine. But don't waste our time talking about it at the, at the town meeting. Uh, let's see, one more. And finally, the Board of Selectmen, they all feel that Mr. Welch is ir irreplaceable. Well, let me tell you something. I've worked in another a number of companies, and even, even everybody is replaceable. So thank you. Thank you for your comments. Other comments? John Tinius, um, on the galley hatch in Hampton. I'm not a resident of the town, but I have a vested interest here. <clears throat> we own property, pay a lot of taxes. And I can say that I'm really very, very upset. I've known Jamie Sullivan for a long time. They've, the two before me have laid down the foundation of what his qualifications are and what he represents. And if you look at his record, whether he was in the police station or whether he was in the town, town management. He was totally respected by all. I don't know anyone in town that personally has said a bad word about Jamie Sullivan. I was very, very distressed at the allegations that were made about his family. I don't think there's, this is a, this should not be a kangaroo court. I know, I know his family. They're all good people. 
I believe in promises kept and prom promises made and promises kept. And this is a promise that you made to a very, very good man. And I would expect that Hampton would keep that promise. You know, I've been around this town for a long time. I, I grew up, kind of grew up here. And I love the town of Hampton. Jamie's one of the nicest people I've ever met. He's always got a smile on his face. He comes in, he does his job. He's respected by the community. It would be a sad day to see Jamie Sullivan not be, not have those promises kept that were made to him. A very sad day. I hope you guys reconsider. Anyone else wishing to meet public comment? Make public comment. Good evening. Good evening, everybody. Happy Fourth of July week in this beautiful town of uh, two miracle miles. I did not grow up in Hampton, but I've been here since 1991. And I have known uh, Jamie Sullivan since 1991 in many capacities. He has always been respectful and very professional. I am confident that uh, as a town manager he can lead and I think the community backs him. So I don't know how we got here. This is a beautiful town. Um, I'm looking forward for Jamie to be the town manager. And uh, to me, he's a friend, but I've watched him from afar. And no, I'm not running for politics. I don't, I'm not as crazy as you people. But uh, he's a good man, good family, and I'm all about uh, America, God, country, and we got a good town. And he's gonna keep it that way. Have a great fourth, stay safe. Mr. Chairman, may we ask the gentleman to state his name and address? I said Dan Lanio, 395 oh. Lafayette Road. Okay, good, thank you. I remember you when I worked as a Lebec Rouge, I used to call you for uh, the Transco. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, 17 and a half years at LeBec Rouge yeah. for Sylvia Dewhurst and Tracy, mm -hmm. and 10 and a half at 401, which I just, you know, yeah. I'm out. So I'm, I'm retired and I'm enjoying it. You Thank you. Have a great week. Excuse me? I said, you got some good credentials there. Thank you. <laughs> Have a great week, guys. <clears throat> Thank you, Desi. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Bob Preston, 339 Ocean. I'm here tonight to speak for Jamie. I have a, some concerns. We, a lot of us know Jamie, but there's many people in town now that don't know everybody. We see that every time we go to the polls, all these new faces. Mm -hmm. yeah. So sometimes people say, well, what is it about this fellow? Why is everybody so upset? I, I don't think it's right. I think you know we have to look at what, Jamie, what Jamie's done over time. Uh, all his time at the high school as a role model and a coach. Um, most recently, our newest, latest little crisis in town happens to be trash. We picked, you picked Jamie to handle that big, diverse group of people to come up with some kind of a solution. All right? I may not agree with the solution he comes up with, but I can guarantee you that the way he holds his meetings, there'll be a demeanor there and a, and, and a respect there that we all don't have here, all right? If you wanna see, judge people sometimes, you judge them on, on what they've done. And, and we'll just look at the Hampton Police Department. We've had some pretty good chiefs over time and we've gone from chief to chief to chief and that department continues to run very well. It runs because you people have brought in leaders to know how to help people. I can tell you if, when the time comes and we need a new town manager, we don't have to go very far. We have somebody sitting on the bench right now. He knows the town, the residents, the community, all of the departments. I don't know what Jamie's politics are because I don't think he shows them. He just treats everybody well. And I think that we should all treat him well too. 
Thank you. Thank you. Ryan Warburton, 24 Sanborn Road. And I'm not sure it was Mr. Morrison or Mr. Hartnett talking about uh, families being picked on, but they were absolutely right because I was the recipient of that last November by an individual in this room. So when you want to go down that road, we can go down as the longest road you want to go down. I'm going to talk about some light stuff and then I'm going to comment on Mr. Sullivan. First of all, I've heard a lot of comments out and about about Mrs. Woolsey. Does everybody realize that on June 10, 1995, it was Mrs. Woolsey because of her hard work that got the town transfer station open? She fought and fought and fought. There was a lot of us who had to hear a lot of grief from people. They didn't want the dump closed. And that's become one of the greatest things that this town has ever had. So if we want to look at history, we can look at that. As far as the non-union raises, absolutely against them. I think this town has got to start showing the taxpayers some responsibility and giving the taxpayers a break. You know, I, I, I know Dave Morrison very well. He worked at Verizon and you know, not every year you get a 2% or 5% or whatever raise, it's not expected. So at the end of the day, quite frankly, when we heard, I think it was Mr. Preston said a lot of people are talking in public. Yeah, there's a lot of people talking and the questions I get asked, who's running the town? Is it Experience Hampton? Is it there a Chamber of Commerce? Is it the guy down the beach? Because there was a comment made in the Hampton Union yesterday, which I had to laugh about uh, the chairman of the Hampton Chamber of Commerce now is going to meet with town officials to beautify the new pro the property, the new owner at the corner of Winnicott. That's not their business. This is what people are fed up with. You guys were elected to make the decisions. Uh, the Solid Waste Committee, I did watch the meeting. I commend a lot of the comments that were made. But the question that needs to be raised is this. Show me the incentive for businesses, commercial trash, to do anything differently. That's the issue. Unless we come forward and show, I think it was Alicia that brought up, or Uda, with great points about a private outfit, and the people who had the private outfit another time were forced to watch their trash and recycling because they're paying for it. Yeah. So we, we got to keep that in mind. The last comment I want to make, and I want to thank the chairman this evening because I know you've let everybody go over the three minutes, and I really respect you for that. It's not about the fact that people keep talking whether or not they like Jamie Sullivan. I'm going to appoint, I'm going to point to 2017, and three members of this board made a contract, which is unheard of, of a part-time employee and promised that employee full-time town manager three years later. That's the issue. Forget about all the stuff whether somebody's qualified. As far as Jamie's qualifications, of course his qualifications as a police chief and the FBI Academy and everything, they're exemplary. But we're talking about town management. Mm -hmm. The other thing we gotta be very careful about, this town needs two town managers like it needs a hole in the head. Yeah. And that's the issue. And I will point to a comment, Mr. Griffin, you made two weeks ago, which people in the community are talking about. Your exact quote was, we're probably not going to have that deputy town manager anyway after Jamie's town manager. That made people think that this was already a done deal for him to get it when he retired from the police department. I'm only telling you that, that the people that I spoke with, and I'm, I'm going to make one more comment, and, and I, I got thick skin. I could care less with you know, people, if I run again or whatever, and if they don't like my decisions, you, too bad. You're the only one to speak more than four minutes. No, away. that's, that's unfair. Finished. Thank uh, you. Well, you are finished. Thank you. Well, that's <laughs> Thank you. Okay. I and had a because very he commented on something I said, I just reserved well, the right. You have, you're finished. Thank can you. Can I just make one final no. statement? Thank you. Okay, because it was thank very you. important. So. Thank you. Thank you. And what you said for what I said is not what was intended. Well, and I'm only said. answering that because you've said something that I've said. Well, I, you said. What I said was we, I felt we didn't need to have two people. I was speaking for what I felt not what this board is That's doing. Said, so, yes, that we and I think it will be that way to be in the in the long run. It will be up to the new chief to decide the new uh, town manager when he is there whether we need to have a HR person or would we need to have a deputy? I personally don't see that we will probably have another deputy in my opinion. But that's my opinion. So you've misunderstood what you've just said there. So don't 
talk for me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I did say it. Yeah, but you misunderstood what I was talking about. Thank you. Rich Sawyer, 41 Vanderpool Drive. I am here speaking as a resident of the town. Somebody raised the issue of Mr. Warburton and his comments about how he was targeted by somebody in the room. I think he might be pointing the finger at me. I'll be very clear. I wrote a memo regarding two members of the budget committee that I felt were legitimate conflicts of interest. I sent that to the chairman. I didn't make a public announcement. I saw, sent it strictly to the chairman. Mrs. Wolseley brought that up at a meeting, and I felt for informational purposes, if we were going to discuss mm -hmm. it, it had to be fully disclosed. I hear a lot of people talk about the word transparency. They ought to stop being transparent then, because I didn't bring it up. Mrs. Wolseley did. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak at public comment? Just because so many people have mentioned this tonight, I want to mention that we will be making a, uh, it's not that uh, I think um, Mr. Tinney has said to reconsider. We've never reconsidered. Everything is exactly the way it always was. Unless it changes here tonight, it is going to be dealt with and put to bed tonight, and we'll see what happens. But it's never been up for reconsideration, except for um, a minimum of the board. So moving on to announcements and community calendar. Mr. Waddell? Yes, uh, it's the 4th of July week. It's going to be very hot. It's going to be very busy down the beach. And I just hope people are safe, that they drive safely, that they treat the water respectfully, and that they uh, don't, don't do fireworks because they're illegal. Yeah, again, it is 4th of July week. Just be safe, have fun, enjoy the community, and uh, take care of one another. Thanks. Mrs. Wolseley. I have one thing. Um, I'm working with the Hampton Beach Village District to have a uh, night for Rick Middleton down at the uh, Seashell. Yes. The yeah. Hampton Beach Village District, I asked them since they're the ones that run the seashell in the summer. So it's going to be on July 16th. It's a Tuesday, and a good friend of mine has arranged for him to be there, and we're just going to celebrate the fact that he's the Hampton resident that recently got his Bruins jersey <coughs> retired. So once we get more information out on that, uh, John Kane's working on calendars and things for that. And I also found out from the former Parks and Recs director that uh, Miss Martin, that he had a lot to do with the fundraising and volunteering for the uh, skate park down by the uh, transfer station. So if the town maybe thought we could do a proclamation or something for him, mm -hmm. if not, it's not a big deal. Mm -hmm. And as far as what was said here tonight, the comments I made were public comment as a resident who also happens to be a selectman. And I talked to a lot of people. Um, not just chamber people, not just people that own businesses, but people that I see every day when I'm doing things that I've been doing my whole entire life. And somehow tonight it got turned into Deputy Manager Sullivan, who I believe Max quoted me correctly when I said in the paper that I had no problem with Jamie Sullivan or the position of Deputy Manager. But going forward, as I warned you, when I, before I got sworn in, I made a statement saying that my first year I comprehended a lot because I'm a hands-on person and I see what the town needs. As an organization, forget about politics, forget about who owns what, who pays what taxes. As an organization, losing a man like Fred Welch, just happens to be Fred Welch, who has 40, 50 years. Now I'm sure all the current chiefs and prior chiefs in this town know what it's like to go from someone who's been on the line of duty and been active for 30, 40, 50 years. They retire, they go away. It takes some adjusting. In the past few months, we've had things happen as an organization, which will always happen no matter what you do. It's impossible to prevent things from happening. That it concerns me to not have our current town manager. I never said anything about changing the contracts. I, this I've, matter's coming up later on tonight that we're going to discuss it, so why don't you wait until we are ready to fine, discuss it? Fine, but I just want to say it somehow is made into Jamie Sullivan. I okay. didn't make it into we're Jamie Sullivan. They did that on their this own. This is uh, announcements and community calendar. Um, the next, we have the approval of the meeting, June 17th. Make a motion that we approve the minutes. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. On the consent agenda tonight, we have dance hall permits for the casino, dance hall, pool table for Charlie's Tap House, heritage appointment, and Carnaby. 
license to coin-operated amusement device, the campground, tidewater, parade and public gathering, bikes and beer, smutty nose, um, pool table permit for Water's Edge, Yacht Club, and number seven, the USS Virginia Committee appointments. Motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Next we have Chief Sawyer with the Police Department. Please join us. I'm sure you've been busy. Just a little bit getting ready for uh, this week's activities, but uh, I think we're in pretty good shape. Uh, the weather forecast is looking great right through the weekend, so I expect we'll be very, very busy for that entire duration, but uh, hopefully we get, get through that uh, unscathed. So the reason I'm here tonight is to discuss an issue on the bottom of C Street. I was approached by the owner of Farr's Chicken, Paul Conway, regarding a parking spot down there or the lack of one. If you drive down uh, C Street from Ocean Boulevard, when you get to the very end in front of Farr's Chicken, you'll see a small space that's got the diagonal lines in it. At one time, that was posted as no parking. Uh, Mr. Conway is seeking to have that turned into a 10-minute parking uh, spot in front of his business. He does get a lot of traffic there, picking up food and, and whatnot. And I went down and took some measurements. The only concern I had is that striped area was only about 16 feet. What I didn't realize, and Paul gave me some of the history, there's a curb cut there. And I didn't want to interfere with the curb cut when we did all those renovations down there with the, uh, the nice sidewalks and all that. And what that was is the previous owner had asked for that, so they had pull-in parking. They don't utilize pull-in parking anymore at that facility. They actually have a fence there. So we could make a spot that is a, a safe distance of approximately 20 feet to accommodate this 10-minute uh, parking zone. So I'm asking for the 10-minute parking spot to be established on the last spot on the southwest corner of C Street. So it's the last spot. It's not behind it anymore? It's right next to the building. It's, it's yeah, direct. Yeah, so you pull in. Yep. Yeah. You could pull in there right after that little driveway they have that you yeah. can pull behind the building. Yeah. There's about a 24-foot section of pavement that we could just re repaint and post as a 10-minute pickup zone. Well, that's good. Yeah. That's where I always park. Sign's been gone for a while, so it's hard for us to enforce anyhow. Thank you. So. Mrs. Wolsey? <clears throat> Mrs. Uh, Regina? I'm ready to make the motion to allow him. So you said it's, it's not going to cut, it's not going to block the ramp. The, the cut, it's not going to block the cutout, you said. It will block a portion of the cutout, but it's not being used anymore because when you go down there and look, you'll see the cutout and directly behind it is the stockade fence. They used to pull in and park straight in against the building uh, and the previous owner. Paul doesn't use it that way anymore, so the cutout really doesn't serve any purpose. There's a cutout further down where the driveway is, but that little section there will accommodate at least a 20-foot spot, which is the safe distance you want to have. Okay. No, I'm fine. Yeah. I'll make the motion. No. Regina, you want to make the motion? I'll make the motion to allow the chief. All those in favor? Thank you. Yeah. I'll contact Public Works and have them put yeah. up the sign. Yeah, the chicken's better than ever. It is. It's, it's really great. good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, we have Ed Tinker, MRI Contract Assessor. Good evening. I'm here tonight to present the last of the 2018 abatements. Um, you should have uh, six in front of you, including the tax collector's abatements. Three, re three recommended for um, refunds and three recommended for, well, two recommended for denial. Now, the refund amount is $1,101.20. Uh, if you have any questions, I can answer those, hopefully. Comments? I'm trying to find my... We had a notice here, and I'm just trying to retrieve it related to the so the total abatements are a little over eleven hundred dollars yeah just over yeah. yeah do we have a motion well the motion that we accept the recommendation on the abatements second Paul, any comments uh, i was just going to say it seems i and i can't find it at the moment but we got a memo of something about people who keep getting visits from the assessing office, and they were getting a little upset. Yeah, it's going to work, so. I think it was um, Ed's memo. Yeah. I believe that you issue know, was taken um, care of. There was a. Yeah, and if people are getting visits and they don't want them, they don't have to let them in. 
Okay, I just. Well, it, it did happen for a short period of time, but okay. it did happen, but, it, but that was taken. Yeah. Well, we actually got a memo that it, they got reassessment visits twice, some yeah. of the properties. Right, the, the, the visits were made, the, the, the new lists that were printed out for the field people um, included those properties, so they went back a second time. That was, that was the issue, but the, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, so is there anything pro problematic with that? Uh, well, I mean, people don't like more than one visit, but actually, no, that's, I mean, it was taken care of. It's, it's been cleaned up. Okay. Yeah. Well, the memo Thank was you. included in our paperwork, okay. so did, I read Did you it. want to go for, did you, yeah, have, yeah you have B also, or do we need to? Well, we didn't vote, vote, vote on this. Okay, no, all those in favor? Mrs. Wolsey. I will abstain. We have four and one is abstention. Okay. Want to go on to B? It'd be yes. Is that some department discussion? No. Oh. Uh, yeah. Are you going to join us to the table, um, Jamie? Good evening. Good evening. One of the things I'd like to see here tonight is uh, a discussion so people know what MRI is. We, uh, we've had the discussions and we've talked about it in length before, but I think people are having a hard time understanding it. And um, so if you could give us a little review of that. Yeah, sure. I'd be happy to start. Um, you know, sometime last year when Mr. Tinker, who was our assessor, um, moved on to private employment, we sat down and, and Fred and I approached the board and asked what the pleasure was, laid out a number of options for you, and the board decided to explore the idea of uh, contracting with an external company. So we went out and looked around. There are a couple out there, and we were able to um, meet, discuss with MRI. MRI is a private company that provides services to municipalities pre predominantly, um, and one of the services they provide is assessing services. So at that time, we presented to the board uh, we discussed with them the possibility of coming on board. As it turns out, that was the private employer that Mr. Tinker went to, um, and MRI was able to put together a proposal that we put forward to the board, and the board decided to go in that direction. So we have contracted our assessing services. That is exactly what you just did with Ed here um, and the functions of the assessor, and he could speak a little bit more of that. In the office, the other part of that was that the board decided to retain two employees in the office, uh, one was the assistant assessor. You made some adjustments to her salary and moved a part-time to a full-time clerk in order to better um, meet the needs of the community as they came in. So that's been going on since I think it was October of last year, yeah. approximately, give or take. Um, and again, they provide our assessing services. Um, all the other materials that come into the office that customarily were taken by the clerks at that point in time are taken. If people request to meet and speak with the assessor, they're referred to the assessor or arrangements are made to meet with the assessor. Um, the assessor has at least one week, one day a week where they're in the office um, to communicate with staff, meet with residents if need be, uh, and provide those services to us. And there are different ways that this could be done if we wanted it tailored to be somewhat different in a different way? Absolutely. Again, as we, right. as we came to the board, there was the option of going out and recruiting for another full-time <laughs> assessor. Um, there was uh, uh, multiple companies that we tried to contact, but uh, MRI was the only one who was responsive. A community of our size has, you know, needs that they don't exactly understand. There are a number of other com uh, uh, communities that use it. The closest one here is Exeter. It's similar in size to us. They actually outsource, in my understanding, their entire assessing function, meaning um, all of the employees in that office work for MRI, provide that service to the community, and there's no employees uh, of the town. It's a contracted service. Uh, as we entered into our agreement, we entered into a three-year agreement. We've also, there is an out clause in there if the board decides to go in a different direction. That's certainly an option for the board to, to consider if that's what you want. Mm -hmm. So, um, Ed, do you have anything further about the assessing department discussion be that you'd like to say before we bring it back to the board? Well, I mean, we, again, I, I've been pretty much the, the the person who's been coming once a week. Yeah. Um, I do answer uh, many emails from the clerk and the assistant assessor with questions, uh, on, you know, daily. If, if, if I get them daily, I respond daily. Um, processes that were in place when I was there seem to be continuing the same way. The, the processes I 
complete when I'm here are the same as I did when I was an employee. Um, uh, I mean, other than that, I mean, we're, it's one day a week. I mean, if, if I mean, it's, the board's looking for more than that, um, you know, that would be the board's decision. But mm -hmm. um, you know, we're in the middle of the reval right now. We've been working on that, so we're doing. You know, we're more people are here doing that process as well. Um, I, I feel things have been going pretty good, but again, uh, you know, that's, you know. So, board. Mr. Uh, Sullivan, do you think that um, we need, the way it's going today, do we need someone more than one day a week? Or, yeah, I realize we're always behind a little bit, but do the basic needs of the town, what, what we've contracted them, well, was when we started when we started this process, what we said was we'd start the process, and that's why the out clause was in there, because it's a new way of doing business for us. Um, certainly, there are always little issues here or there that we deal with. I, I think Fred can answer this as well. None that have come to my attention is a significant problem of complaints or issues from the citizens getting service. Um, you know, as we see some of the results of our abatements and what have you, the, the numbers are, are, are good uh, compared to past years. We're going through a, a reval, which always leads to folks having questions. I suspect that'll increase when that reval is, is completed and those numbers come out. Um, but to my knowledge, and Fred, you can talk about this as well, we're not aware of citizen complaints of significant issues. Oops. Okay. That's what I thought. Um, so, uh, um, we'll open it up to questions from the board so we can decide if this is something that we want to discuss uh, changing where we do have this ability to, you know, either leave or do it in a different way, use it in, you know, another way than we've been using it, MRI I'm talking. So, Mrs. Wolseley, do you have any questions or things you'd like to talk about with the assessing department? I prefer that we go back to a full-time qualified so assessor. So do you have anything tonight to discuss? I no. just said. Okay. I, would, I Regina, prefer that we go back to, to a full-time yes. assessor. Would you like to assessor. ask questions? Yes, I'd like to discuss. Um, I have heard a couple of residents complain, not as far as the, not having the assessor in the office. And I think that maybe after we get through the assessments, maybe we can figure out whether or not I'm not really, I think that the board needs to sit down with the entire assessing department. I'm not sure what the most kosher way of doing that is. I'd look to town council to seek that answer, management there, whatever the case may be. But the feedback that I'm getting from in-house and out in the community, I think needs to be addressed. And I think it needs to be addressed with everyone in the same room, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. I know Ed, um, if Ed wants to be the representative from MRI or if he feels that someone else is uh, more qualified to do so. I will say that I had a bunch of questions, probably 14 or 15 of them, that I emailed. Well, I actually emailed to Charlene because she wanted to know my questions. So I emailed the, her first. And then I also CC'd the town manager and the assistant town manager. And Ed ended up with them. So I'm assuming that they got forwarded to Ed. <laughs> And he immediately got the answers back, and the answers are sufficient, but I really think that the best thing to do, just because I feel like this is something that we need to look at going forward, it's assessing, it's the number that pretty much determines everything. Not mm -hmm. that there's necessarily something wrong with it, right. but- No, I think an evaluation hearing, period makes good sense to you, yeah. Mm -hmm. And if it's the best way that town council can recommend us to do that, I don't really care what the format be, but I think if it's all yeah, there are depending on what you're talking about, I think you, you mentioned a couple different things. There is an evaluation of how you think the contracted services is. That's one box, and then our employees. They're really two separate issues. Let's just we just have to keep that in mind. Yeah, if there's I mean, issues I in the office we need to discuss. We can do that. Uh, but as far as the, um, you know, the, the operations of the contract with the company, that's certainly something that the board should evaluate and can evaluate. But I don't think I can evaluate that until we. Work it sounds on to more me like we need stuff. to have a uh, private meeting scheduled with the two women that work there uh, separately, or it's an. So yeah, I, I would. I would 
caution, we don't talk about employees other than non-public yeah. unemployment issues, but yeah. if you're going to evaluate the MRI contract and services, that's certainly appropriate for us to discuss, and what you think of that issue, you've already signed off on that. Um, but as far as anything further dealing with employees, that should yeah. only be done in a non-public situation, and, and if you have any concerns there, we can, we can deal with them then. I yeah. would like to try to schedule that yeah. if we could. Yeah. But again, I'd keep those boxes two separate things uh, because yeah, now MRI is a contracted service and it is no longer the supervisor. He's no longer in charge of the office and really is, is not a part of that. He's <clears throat> the representative of MRI doing our assessing function, which is a separate box. They're interrelated, obviously, but for that issue, we could, you know, issues if you have them, we and can the discuss issues them. issues that we have to decide as a board of selectmen has nothing to do with the employees. So okay. obviously we want to talk to the employees, and I think that we'll go ahead and schedule a meeting. Uh, um, we can probably, I assume, we could, we could either have it before or after. Does anyone um, prefer it one way or the other? I don't mind. Um, we're, I think it's probably better for the employees if we do it before. So why don't we, we could leave that with Fred and we'll work that out a schedule for yeah. you that works best. So we could right. set it up yeah. in convenience. Maybe at 6 o'clock uh, or maybe 6.15. Or maybe even earlier in the day, depending on who, yeah. who, 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 who's available, if we get everybody available earlier so we're not having to pay overtime to have the employees come in. Do we have to pay the employees you to come in? certainly do. To they're all the employees. Yeah. yeah. Well, we'll do it when they're working. Uh, so we'll work on some schedule options for yeah. you. Fred, yeah. be in touch. Okay, great. Right. Anything um, else? Will you wait? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> How many other towns use, approximately use MRI? I don't know the list in front of me, but there were, there were a number in, in both. What's that? 21. 21. 21 towns use yeah. MRI because right. I heard a, a, a statement once that nobody in New Hampshire uses M, uh, an outside assessor, so I just wondered that. The other thing is, how many towns have dropped MRI? No one that I know of. Okay. Uh, have there been any major complaints filed against MRI? No, sir. No. All right. And, and we've had no written complaints come no. in to us. I, th no, I think it's important that if we're thinking about different issues, that we think about them in a factual manner and not just that somebody told me or somebody said. Mm -hmm. Having been married to a commercial and residential appraiser, assessor, I, I know that assessors always end up in court. They are, there's always people unhappy with them. There's always people unhappy with how it does. But I think we need facts to deal with when we're dealing with stuff like that. And I think it's important to say, is MRI giving us the service that we're contracting for? Are there other complaints in the in the state on MRI? You know, are they a reputable uh, organization and how that's going? So I think that's really important to talk about. We're of no concerns or issues with MRI. That's why we spoke to them. Um, right. As far as our relationship, I'm aware of no concerns that have been raised with regard to that. Every department we have has from time to time people who dislike the answers they get or they, their service. That happens in every department, whether they're full time or not. Um, so as you go through this, I would say keep in mind why you went the direction. The majority of the board wanted to go to this direction was it had the opportunity for significant cost savings. We are seeing those significant cost savings. We talked about it at the time. One of the trade-offs for that is the potential for a, a reduction in service that some folks might not like. Again, uh, we that I'm aware of, Fred, who takes the lead in a lot of the assessing issues, we're aware of none of those that have made it to his office or issues we've had to intervene or deal with. Okay, thank you very much. There are, just for your information, there are four principal private firms in the state that do assessing. One of them does more than 150 assessments for uh -huh. 150 cities and towns. MRI does 21, and there are, there are two others. Uh, both of those use different assessment systems that we currently use, so mm -hmm. if we, we change to one of those two, we're going to have to scrap our entire system and start from scratch. So. Mm -hmm. When you say yeah. the system, the IT system, right. that was part of what they did. We did an upgrade, I think it was last year on that, a pretty significant financial impact on that upgrade. So Let me, let me expand okay, on wait, my wait, concern. Wait, no. Please, no, please. I want to expand let's on my concern. Let's let other people talk, Regina. It's Rusty's turn to talk. If you want to talk yes, afterwards. Yes, thank you. Um, yeah, I think until we, until we get through this assessment, you know, we, you re, how, can you, how can you evaluate somebody when you're only halfway through the job? I think that... Uh, well, the two separate jobs, keep in mind. The, the warrant article right. that does our assessment is one job. Right. And our assessing function under the contract is a separate issue. It is a separate yeah. issue. The two separate issues, I agree. However, that they're tied together. Sure. And so I think we need to have that so we can. I have no problem looking at it and going through it with 
with Ed. I think uh, I think it's a good time to look at things every once in a while. But uh, I haven't heard any complaints. I haven't heard uh, the town manager says he hasn't heard any complaints. So um, we'll leave it at that. Okay. And I would like to uh, say that I've heard of no complaints. In fact, of all the years I've been here, this is my 15th year, this is the least amount of complaints we've had in the assessing department. Mm -hmm. And that's very true for according to how many people have asked to have uh, abatements. So I haven't really heard of any complaints, and maybe things aren't uh, whistling along downstairs, mm -hmm. and maybe that's what we have to figure out. Again, I wouldn't discuss anything about yeah. operations. Right. Yeah. I just think that maybe yeah. the MRI discussion is getting skewed because what I'm talking about is it's an outsource. Mm -hmm. Okay? And maybe right now it's not proper to yeah. have an outsource. Not saying anything about the company. Mm -hmm. I've gone online. I've looked at all the towns that they do valuations for. But the assessing department does more than just assessments. They also do exemptions. They're responsible for a lot of information. Mm -hmm. So when I... The MRI as a company, not saying anything bad about, but you know, just because everyone has it doesn't necessarily mean it's right for Hampton either. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I just want to clarify that and that the assessing department is responsible for just more than the assessments. And I was down and I chatted with the uh, assessing the MRI guy that was there today doing the assessments and he said mm -hmm. they were in good shape. So I don't want to try to say that I'm saying MRI is bad or, you know, I'm just saying physical presence of an assessor in the office. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm getting at. Yeah, and that's, a, again, under the contract, it's a very appropriate thing as far as I'm concerned if you evaluate that and whatever the majority of the board decides to do. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Yeah, thanks, Ed, for Thank coming you. in tonight. Yep. Um, next, we have Ann Carnaby, Rockingham County Planning Commission. Update. Yeah, you've got your name on a couple of spaces on this agenda. It, it was um, a mistake, the other one, I think. Oh. Good evening. Good evening. On a completely different note, <laughs> <laughs> you have asked in the past for an update from time to time of what's going on with the RPC. Uh, we just had <clears throat> our annual meeting and um, as one of three commissioners that you appointed to represent Hampton to the RPC I wanted to bring you that update um, the big news is that RPC I hope maybe we'll get it on the monitor mm -hmm. they have a brand new logo and a brand new look and I can hold it up at least. Oh, oh there it is. Is, no, is it? Yeah. There we go. Um, which I find really exciting. It um, was unveiled at the annual work report to the commissioners. I brought copies of this report and a brand new one-page brochure that I will leave for each of you. Um, I do believe it more accurately reflects the vibrant positivity of the organization today. And I picked up all this material at noon today, so you are the first town <laughs> to see and have it. Um, another part of the meeting I'd like to highlight was the presentation of several awards, among which was the Daniel Quinlan Award. This was established in menu of Dan Quinlan, a long-serving RPC commis commissioner, and is given in recognition of those in the region who made significant contributions to sound community and regional planning and have fostered intermunicipal cooperation and collaboration in the region. Now, this award has been given only seven times since its inception in 2005, including to Warren Banbury of Hampton in 2011, and this year, it was given to Jay Diener. Oh. Um, I'll try and give you a brief summary of the remarks that were made at the presentation, mm -hmm. that Jay embodies that rare combination of vision and unswerving personal commitment, achieving goal after goal, by almost magically causing like-minded citizens to join in and support his several objectives. 
He was passionate citizen advocate for acquisition and conservation of public lands and the preservation of natural resources. When Jay settled in Hampton in 1998, um, he was determined to learn how the town operated and to find ways to make a beneficial difference as a citizen. So he resulted in creating the Hampton Handbook, um, How the Town of Hampton Works comprising everything you want to know about the nature of the town and how elected, administrative, and or citizen volunteers function. And this handbook is still now available um, at Town Hall and on the website. Since 2005, Jay has been a contributing member of the Hampton Conservation Commission and an officer of the commission um, from 2010 to the present. Um, and has been active with the conservation coordinator in preserving and managing existing conservation lands and often persuading town officials and voters to acquire additional areas by way of easements or purchase via grants and warrant articles. Today, our public land now constitutes approximately 415 acres of public lands acquired for conservation and recreation. He also spearheaded the formation of the Seabrook Hamptons Estuary Alliance, um, abbreviated SHEA, in which volunteers from several communities cooperate for the protection of coastal and aquatic resources and the preservation of the area estuarine system through education, community outreach, and research. Um, and an outgrowth of a grant provided to Shea led to the formation of the Coastal Hazard Adaptation Team, which is gathering a number of Hamptons boards, committees, the village district, and the area commission to uh, coordinate finding common solutions to our coastal issues. And I just wanted you to be aware of um, the appreciation uh, and the regard that the regional organization has <coughs> for Jay and his activities. And then one last bit of Hampton-related RPC news that Tim Roach, the executive director, and another staff from RPC will be at the July 17th planning board meeting to present a Master Plan 101 seminar to assist the planning board in building the basis for our updated Master Plan for the town, which is going to be happening. Um, this is a public meeting, and I wanted to be sure that you knew that you were all invited to attend and participate and tell us what you think. So I'll distribute these. <laughs> and uh, thank you very much. Do you have any questions? Here we I just wanted to say that at the um, planning board, yes. everyone's real excited uh, with uh, Jason. Uh, being the cheerleader, and he has a lot of good ideas, and he's being fair and getting lots of uh, involvement from everyone concerned. Well, you know, it. Um, as I also sit on the planning board, it is the law that our job as planning board is to make sure that we have current and maintained a master plan for the town. And we were awfully sorry that the warrant article to fund some assistance in this was, was not funded this year. And we are working very hard to educate the public about the need for this and what we need to do in order to move forward to get a cogent, useful master plan that you can hold in one hand and yeah. refer to um, as soon as possible for the town. So that's our goal. Thank you. Else? Thank you. Mary Louise. And first I want to thank you. Uh, the planning board has uh, refused to assess impact fees to help the residents of this community, but you certainly now are pursuing extraction 
fees, and I congratulate you Exceptions, for that. Exceptions, yes. Yes, and uh, thank you very much for that. And a uh, round of applause to Jason for working hard, and I think that uh, hopefully that committee will help him get something sensible done on that master plan. A and book I, like this oh, yeah. is crazy. And the RPC is, is an incredible dynamic resource for us, mm -hmm. and we are very, very fortunate to have uh, the access we do with them. Yep. So thank you. For so that. thank you. I want to say know? thank you as well, Anne. And I actually have a question because at our last board meeting, the town manager gave us a notice from the Office of Strategic Initiatives about land that's going to be surplus land. Yeah. And I noticed that it also went to the Rockingham Planning Commission. Do you know anything about that, about land that's going to become available? I know maybe like our Conservation yeah. Commission could be interested in it, but I don't know what the price of it is. I'm not sure that you would have the funding, but I just noticed that it yeah, went to the I, RPC I remember as hearing well. that too, and as a part-time volunteer, did not have not had a chance to find out about it. But um, probably between Jason and Rayanne, you might get yes. okay. some more information mm -hmm. about right. that. Thank you. And I'll make a note to self to and ask them. Most of it's them auction, isn't it, Fred? Mm -hmm. More open land. If it's asked for by a governmental agency starting at the county level and working or actually state departments so they're working down to the county level mm. and working down to the municipalities uh, first pick goes to state agencies second Correct. to county third to municipalities so uh, it can be something that can be donated to the town it can be something that you're gonna have to pay a fee for yeah. all right well we'll look into that thank Mr. you Lionel. thank you thanks and Rusty well, thank you Thank you very much. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Just keep working hard, Mr. Anne. Mr. Chairman, before we go on to the next one, <laughs> I did have two uh, things under announcements. We had two Marines pass away this past week from yes. Hampton. One was Warren White at about 92 yes. years old. Warren yeah. served in the Marine Corps starting in 1946, went on to serve the aerospace industry for 40 or 50 years. He had lived in Hampton a long time. I've known the White family for about 50 years, and uh, he was laid to rest on Sunday. And I, I was notified the other day of Charles Scoffham. Charlie was a, a unique guy. He's 96 years old. Scoffano? Scoffano, I know, yes. and I meant to say that. He was yes. my neighbor pretty much my whole life. Yeah, um, I used to have coffee with Charlie probably three or four days a week, and he still drove at 96 years old. Uh, one of the nicest guys, he had the biggest smile. He was always happy to see you, and I was saddened to hear of his uh, passing. Very sad. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you. Next we have Jamie Sullivan. Good evening again. Uh, I've been asked here to answer some questions that the board had regarding a couple of issues. Um, my understanding is the first one is the uh, non-union uh, employee compensation. You've all received the memos from the manager's office, and I understood you had some questions, so I'd be happy to answer whatever questions you currently have. Mrs. Wolseley? Memo. You don't have any questions? What, what memo? We got last week, uh, two weeks we got ago. last week, yeah. Actually, there are memos that were sent back in May on this issue, yeah, both from me old. and to, and from oh. the um, finance director. Re making recommendations and giving you options of what you could do. Right. I'm going to just briefly overview. That's fine. I'll, I'll be happy to do that. Um, in the current budget, there is a line item called merit um, that is in uh, the personnel administration budget that has about 25,000 and change in there. Um, and customarily, the board takes a look at that each year and assesses whether or not you wish to give out um, uh, merit increases or increases to the non-union employees. Um, so that memo details that, um, and really it's a light switch. First question, do you wish to utilize that money? And if you, you wish to utilize it, we make a recommendation on how to do so. Um, but that's the first issue for the board to decide. Did you have questions, um, Regina? Um, no, I don't have any questions, but as far as making a motion to do it, I, I don't, I'm not ready to do that, but I do like what the assistant town manager did because it is what we discussed about doing 
last year, but because of what happened last year and it not passing, I don't think it's proper to do it for this year going forward. Mm. And I'm not I'm not ready to uh, do anything with that twenty five thousand dollars that's in the budget. And how do you feel about that? Well, yeah, it's a board decision. No. I mean, I certainly no. there's every time that that, that our <clears throat> union folks get raises and the non union folks do, you have some morale issues you'll deal with, no question. Uh, but those are things the board's going to have to wrestle with. You know, I, I I think it's it's a challenge we have in a default budget, but I also think it's appropriate to utilize that money and and reward the work that our our folks are doing. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to agree with uh, Jamie. Um, we, if you watch the news, you watch everything, we're in the best economy we've been in. We have the lowest unemployment we've ever had. We have a stock market that's just raging on. We have businesses that are doing extremely well. McDonald's, uh, Burger Chef, all those are offering all sorts of money. And I, I, cannot, I cannot in good conscience say that I would not recommend giving a, a raise, whether it be a small raise or whatever, to our employees who have done well and have serviced us well. I mean, I think they deserve it, and I think it's a, I think it's a tough one. I think the $25,000 is there, and I am 100% for it because most people in, in the uh, economy are getting raises in the job market, so I, I'm 100% for it. And I agree. I think uh, we did a wage study here a number of years ago, and we found out that a number of our positions were uh, deficient, and some of them were way below deficient. Um, and so I think we should we should work at trying to get that up to what the MRI study said uh, when it came to wages. And uh, you're right; we're in a good economy right now. We have our employees have been valued employees, and I think to penalize them. Uh, with the money being there, I think it sends a wrong message. So I'd be in favor of it. Um, and this is something that we would do in private or during the meeting? Well, you, you make the decision whether or not you want to utilize those funds now and how you do that in public is fine. In we yeah, absolutely. In public. Yeah. Yeah. You don't discuss individuals or anything of that nature, right. but this is mm -hmm. a policy decision that's certainly appropriate to discuss in public. Uh, about the tw So if we need a decision here right now if we want to um, um, consider uh, bringing this forward for the 25000 mm -hmm. and yes. how it's dispersed. Well, uh, yeah, step one is decide to use it. Step two, we can discuss how to disperse it. We have a recommendation if the board chooses to do that. We have a recommendation on how we would uh, recommend you proceed. Okay, Mrs. Walsley. Yeah, I have a quick question, and I believe this happened last year. In a department that has a long time manager and a new uh, an employee is then elevated to the position why would we give well let, let me back off on that a little bit the individual who left the employee of the town had been employed for a good 25 years at least she was earning a reasonable salary. When her replacement was put in to take over that department, that replacement was given the same salary as the individual with many years of service who left. Yes. Isn't that rather, it was about an $18,000 a year raise? Well, it was a promotion to a, a director level yes. position. But so, not as much experience as the prior. So, so there's two issues that come out with that. First is this was a promotion, not a raise. So it was a new position. It was a director level. And this is one of the reasons that I had been recommending um, we go down the path of dealing with this study from MRI and setting up these ranges. Because in Hampton, we have had one number for those positions in the past. Mm -hmm. And in order to be able to deal with those issues, you're exactly right. There are term of service, there are skills, SKAs, skills, knowledge, and ability, all things that, quite frankly, we didn't have good guidance to be able to use on that range. <clears throat> Coming up with the ranges, it certainly is something in the future we'll be able to do. It'll leave the manager some authority to be able to put somebody in there based on, hey, we got a very highly skilled person into a position, and we can move them into the range. We've got a new person, we could start them on the lower end. Previously, we had one number. We didn't have a range. And it 
posed some problems in the past um, of doing those very things. How do you, you can always do it, but the question came up on a number of occasions, uh, concerns of, for example, in one case we hired into a director position a, a female, a woman who came into that position, and those discussions were trying to lower that pay rate. Well, there was one pay rate. It, it looks, it's not appropriate, it's not, so that's why one of the recommendations that we had, and what you'll see and what the board is now choosing to move forward with, I assume, is this range that can address that very issue. Could, could I just say, say something, mm -hmm. and I agree 100%, it's a disservice to say it was a raise, it was not a raise. Oh. And the director that was in there was grossly underpaid. Yeah. Grossly underpaid. So it was, it was not a position that was a highly paid position. And it, and it would be, it's a disservice to say it was a raise because it was not a raise, and it makes the person look bad. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like we have um, a, uh, uh, there's three of us here that decide that we want to so talk about So we should probably take a vote to that effect if I'll that's what you wish to do. I'll make a motion that we go ahead and proceed with the, uh, I'll second the 25,000. I still have discussion. Yeah. We, well, I'll second the motion so we can have the yeah, motion. So we have a first and a second, and I just want to say it doesn't have to, we don't have to use all 25,000 no. if we decide. We can use whatever. You, exactly yeah. right. Okay, thank you. Yep. Discussion? Okay, so on this list, and I, like again, I agree with what you did. But I just don't think that, because what I see with this list is now I've been doing it now, this will be my fourth year, is that some of these people on this list have gotten actual pay increases, and some have not. Mm -hmm. Now, MRI looked at it sort of independently, which is one of the reasons why I liked it, because they came from the outside mm -hmm. and they just looked at everyone, where they stood, and they compared it to whatever the municipalities were, they compared it to. But, um, my problem is, well, one, Lieutenant Gidley's still on here, so I mean, yeah, that's, yeah, not, that's not going to be applicable. Right. But, um, so, there's some people on this list that I feel are really getting shafted. And we have $25,000 because it's a default budget. So, and the other problem, which, you know, I understand what Mary Louise said, I understand what Jim said, but just giving the number every year. Mm -hmm. Why can't we do more of a bonus type thing? I mean, when I worked at a CPA firm, I got a bonus at the end of the year. And that was based on my performance. If it wasn't good, my bonus wasn't as good. And it was also based on the performance of the firm. Mm -hmm. If we got more clients, if we lost one, mm -hmm. after the, uh, yeah. they got overregulated, and we lost a bunch of our community banks, we had less clients, we had less income. So it seems like just taking, and I appreciate what you and Christy do, you, a lot of detail is put into this, and like I said, I agree, I agree with your memo that you sent us actually on May 9th, I have it right here, but I have to listen to what the town said. Yeah, absolutely. And the town said no. So we have $25,000 there, well, yeah, but I mean, we've had Public Works come in here a week after the budget, or whatever it was, after the budget passed, and cut all this money out of their budget, and they're the ones that need the most money out of everyone. I mean, they have $3.4 million in their 2020 capital improvement plan. I mean, I'm pretty sure if we want to do something, if we want to make sure that we hit people, we don't want them to, you know, be upset, and I realize how great the economy is doing regardless of what some thought it was going to do. But that doesn't mean that who I'm sitting at this table for, I can just totally disregard. And I'm sitting at this table for the town of Hampton, which is not just the employees, but the people that pay all the taxes. Mm -hmm. So if we want to use this $25,000, I might not have a problem with that. But instead of just blanking at everyone 1.9% or 2%, so, that's so I be feel part like- of the discussion that we're gonna have if, we, if this motion passes. So it's not tonight. Oh, okay. So we're not going to decide no, on the amount no, tonight? No, no. This so is just to decide if we're going to have it on the, we'll probably put it on the agenda the next time. This is perfect. just to decide if we're going to have it. That's perfect. So mm -hmm. the motion is uh, that we are going to discuss it at the next meeting. And no, the motion was to utilize the 25000 yeah. for raises. Yes, yeah, so if right. we decide that that's what we want to do. You know, that was was to utilize it for raises. That was the motion. Yeah, but we don't have to utilize it. That's what I just asked, and he said no, we didn't. 
Well, it should be clear. If you, you make the vote to utilize it, then it's how do we distribute that 25000 How do we distribute that money to the employees? And we have some recommendations on how to proceed with that. If the board, that's again, it's in the memo. The board wants to put this off to another day to discuss it. That's yeah, fine, too. I think we should rediscuss it again. Uh, well, so, I think yeah. I think we should we go forward with it. And we can rediscuss it, but I don't want it to see it linger on for months and months like we've had it happen in the past. We would do it in November before, and I think I yeah. think we can come back with it fairly soon. Yeah, yeah no. I mean, I guess the information I'd want from what is it you folks need? Uh, what what more information do you need to help make you to make the decision? I think what would help Jamie for me is if you resent this out to okay. us again. Yep. Uh, it's been since May, and some of us may not have it, and I think we could see that. I mean, you had a proposal in there for 1.9. You also had a proposal in there for 1.35, along with some other adjustments. For They're all things for consideration. That's correct. Right. So I think again, if you send that back out to us again, and then we can bring it up in that. two weeks so yeah. that we can. In general, if I can, what we had discussed in-house in the team is you know, if a, you make the decision you want to utilize that money, then the decision is how do we distribute that? And our recommendation was in the 19 budget preparation, this board decided that you wanted to move people at least to the halfway mark of the MRI study. Remember, you were going to do that over two years. Mm -hmm. Going to move them halfway the first time, the second half the second time. So our recommendation was to use that as the priority, to focus on those folks first and move them to at least that goal that you had set for the 19 budget. And then, for the other folks, take the remaining money and evenly distribute it amongst those folks. That's what our recommendation essentially was. And the third part of that was for those folks who have reached the maximum end of the, um, the, the uh, uh, pay Scale. plan, yeah. that we not, it not go into a salary, into a base salary adjustment. They stop at the maximum end, and if there's a differential above, as like when Barnes had indicated, it could be paid as a, a merit increase or a bonus, where it's a one-time payment instead of adjusting on your base salary. So all of those things are there for consideration. It's in the paperwork. We'll be happy to send that back out to you for consideration, and we can take it up whenever you like. But we still have a motion in a second. Right. Yeah. I've got, um, uh, my motion's on the, on the table, so we have to deal with the motion. So you have to take a vote. Restate that. That we use the 25000 for pet raises, for non-union raises. Now, how we do it, that's a different story. And that's my motion. Have any of these people gotten raises? No, none of the non-union this year have received raises. No. And all of the uh, union uh, workers, pretty much, or yeah. most of them, yes. have received. Okay. All of the unions are under contract, and they have received yeah. their appropriate raises on April okay. 1. So, yes, okay. So, all those in favor? Against? We have three and two. So, we'll okay. schedule it for the next meeting. Very good. And please send all the information out. I will do again. so. And um, <laughs> why don't uh, we jump next to the solid waste update? Yeah. yeah. So um, we have had two meetings on the solid waste committee at this point in time. Excuse me. Uh, the first meeting was uh, just an introductory thing, and and we had public works committee give an overview to everyone and took questions from folks so we could make sure we put together a packet of information that addressed all of their concerns. Um, spent about two hours going over really the state of facts, what we do, because there's some misinformation of what collections were. So we shared all that information with the committee, uh, had a discussion about uh, what questions they might have in addition to what was shared, and that led to uh, a whole packet of information being sent to everybody prior to our second meeting, and that included all of our budget issues, all of our policy decisions that this board has set, uh, some legal issues, all of those things that would help inform them so that they can uh, better understand the challenges that are before us as a community, and we're all on the same page. Uh, I thought that went very well. The feedback from the committee was that went very well in the second meeting, um, and we are now preparing for our third meeting, which will be on the 8th. So we're, our schedule is right now twice a month on the opposite week from you folks. So we utilize this room and have our discussions here. Uh, I think the feedback's been good so far. There's been some good exchanges. Um, there's certainly, we're at that point now where a lot of information has come to folks. There's a lot of things to absorb. Uh, we've had some good discussion of different perspectives. Uh, next Monday, we're having uh, uh, Town Attorney Gerald come in and talk about the legal issues. Um, everybody's received some memos, but what are the, what's the law obligate the community to do? What do we do? And to answer some of those questions that were raised um, in the uh, public discussions 
with regard to specific RSAs that were discussed there about what they are and how they, how they relate, based in his opinion. So that's our next meeting, what we intend to do. And, you know, again, I, I think it's a great committee, good folks, and we're moving forward. Any questions? Mrs. Wolseley. Did Public Works forward to you my email? Um, I think uh, Chris indicated they would on the bottle situation. Uh, I got an email from you with like four or five points in it. Is that correct? Yeah, well, mostly I'm thinking about bottles. I'm told that in the good old days, if you were a restaurant uh, and you sold beer, that the restaurant owner would put aside the empty beer bottles and the company who was selling them the beer would take the bottles back and give a little, uh, give a little money or a little compensation. Mm -hmm. We've got to get the glass out of the waste stream. So that doesn't happen anymore. I they know. don't pay for it anymore. Um, so you're, 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 that's certainly an issue. Weight is an absolute issue that the yes. committee's wrestling with. Um, brought up by one of the other members is also our food wastes. There are a number of different things to consider. Um, and that's what the committee will continue to do. We're getting information from various sources. Folks send uh, information to us, and it's sent back out to the committee members, and the next meeting we'll discuss those issues. But mm -hmm. certainly the ways we could deal with it, if we stay doing it the way we do it now, weight's an issue, how can we reduce weight, how do we deal with contamination, all those things that we're ongoing with. Mm -hmm. But we don't know yet whether the committee wants to go with recommendations to you folks as a policy. Mm -hmm. So it's all of that's the information that's getting to them. They'll see it, and we'll discuss it. It's not just beer Korea. bottles. I mean, the pickle jars, as I said, and the other. Any glass. Just, anything yeah. with glass, glass. And again, right now, you know, where weight is always our issue of how you can reduce costs. Right now, glass is still fine to recycle and be in there. It's not an issue. But it's, it's adding still there. to the weight. Absolutely. It's All of it's the weight. Added. Everything adds the to the weight. Anything that goes in the stream adds to the weight, yes. Right. So that's certainly all areas that the committee's going to consider. Uh, we've started to have some request to have various different providers that do other services to come in and propose what they do for consideration. So, you know, we've, we've had folks sending out videos of how different countries deal with it. How do they process it? And all of that's great, but at some point we're going to have to consolidate that and see what its costs are. What do we have? Yeah. I mean, there's is one observation we made of the recycling market has changed tremendously. Oh, yeah. And as a result, what was not financially feasible previously may well be in the future. You know, mm -hmm. something that was cost prohibitive for another company to deal with because of that change in market, it might open up new opportunities. And we've got to mm -hmm. be prepared to look at those. And I think that's going to change moving forward. So there's a lot mm -hmm. of things this group is considering, and we'll see where we go. Because I consider that the third issue on waste. You have waste, trash, you have recycling, Glass, I think, is a third entity, and an entity all by itself yeah, it may needs be. to be addressed. It, it may be, and the committee is addressing all of these issues, and we'll see what the recommendations are back to the board. Yeah. Thank you. Regina? Yeah, no, I mean, I agree with you, especially on the recycling. I think we might sort of be in the dark ages based on what I see going on in other places, and I know that that's probably what you guys are talking about. Yeah, and again, these, this, I saw a, a very creative uh, e email that came from, I think it's uh, Singapore. Uh, one of the members sent it out recently, and yeah, it, it looks pretty amazing. Singapore does it as a national incinerator. Everybody ships to a small island country, they ship everything there, they incinerate it, it turns to ash. And then they have a way to dispose of that ash. It's a, you know, again, it's creative, but is it realistic for us as a community, or is that more of a state and national thing? Again, in time... I think new markets with this recycling issue are going to change the way we all do business, and that's something we'll have to be mindful of. How long that will take, we don't know. But, mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot of issues here, and I think that's why you folks created the committee to ask them to help guide you and what the community might want, and it's a big challenge. It's a big challenge. Big difference between Singapore and Hampton. Mm -hmm. They throw you in jail if you throw gum on the floor. Yeah, or, yeah we or don't do that. Trash. We don't do that. I, I watch the meetings and... I think it's going fine. I think that's a good committee. I think it's a diverse group on there. Sure. I think there's they, there's some really good questions. Really good. Yeah, it's a good job. No, I think uh, the committee is is doing what they need to do, and when it comes out the other side, we'll see what they bring us. And uh, 
Uh, and you get to deal of, with it. I get a lot of credit to them for putting up with it because there's a lot of stuff. And like you said, the, the markets are ever-changing. Yeah. No, I, again, I, I think it's a great group, a very diverse group that you chose to put on there. I think it's great. represents a bunch of different points of view, uh, some creative thoughts from folks, and we'll see where we end up at the end. I just saw this week, and I can't <coughs> think of right now who, which it was, but I think it was either Pepsi or one of the or Co. One of those big companies are now going to do all their water in cans versus the plastic bottles. Oh yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, so it, it is definitely changing, and I just hope that when the committee is finished, that they'll bring us information that we can use to do warrant articles, so this can be put to yeah. the public to decide. Yeah, and I think that's from the outset. That was the goals that yeah. we the goal we set for the committee, based on what your direction was, is just that. Now, whether we come, I, I, you know, with one or multiples, I, I suspect you're going to see multiples. Yeah, but I would think we'll so. see at the end. You know, we'll see at the end, and I'll, and I'll be happy to come back and give you yeah. updates. It will be exciting. Um, so, does anyone else have any questions they'd like to uh, talk with with um, Mr. Sullivan? Mm -hmm. No. Thank you. We appreciate Thank you. it. Have a good night. Yes. I stopped in there today. I must have missed, I think it was around lunchtime, so I must have missed you. Yeah, I get out late for lunch today. Yeah. Come back, yeah. Okay. Down the beach looking at trash and <laughs> gates. Oh, there's plenty so. of it. Yeah. <laughs> thank you very good much. Night. Yeah, night. thank you. Next, we have the town manager's report. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, <clears throat> uh, this is a big trash weekend. Yeah. Fourth of July always is. Yeah. So our transfer station will be open on Thursday from noon to 3 p.m. And we will be doing our regular pickup, just as a regular pickup day on July 4th on mm -hmm. Thursday. Yeah. So Good. people, please put your material out because we're going to come by to get it. Good. Um, I received a, a letter, or a copy of a letter that Aquarian sent to their uh, abutters and property owners yeah. uh, on Mill Road. Uh, they are beginning this week the construction of their Mill Road water treatment plant. So expect more traffic than usual. Uh, there's obviously going to be large trucks coming in, equipment coming in to do mm -hmm. that construction. So yeah. please be careful. Uh, the construction is all taking place on their property. Uh, and during the weekdays between, five, between 7 and 5 um, during the month of July. You know, how long that will go on depends upon, I assume, weather and other things that may take precedence and uh, what's actually going to happen. Now for the good news. Uh -oh. uh, Primax is returning to us in a premium holiday, $13,527.28 of our insurance premiums. Oh, my goodness. Because we have filed a lot less insurance claims this year. Uh, we're doing a good <laughs> job managing those. And... Uh, they would like to see to it that we get a holiday on our expenses. That's it, sir. Yeah, it's been a while since we've had been in that position with them, but there was a time when we've done Every quite year. well with yes. them. Mrs. Wolsey. Yes, um, I <laughs> want to commend Aquarian, which is now finally communicating in a timely manner to residents of this community. That's very good. We had a little dust up last year but it is encouraging to see the notifications coming out for the different projects. That really helps the, uh, the individuals and the neighborhoods. So I'm saying thank you. See, when I complain, sometimes I say thank you. Gina? Yeah, actually, to add a note on Aquarian, yeah, they had a pretty, I guess it was a pretty significant water leak a couple weeks ago, and yeah. no one even noticed anything and they it happened on a Friday and they had the whole thing repaired by Wednesday so mm -hmm. I'd say less than a week that's pretty good so thank them for that and for keeping everyone notified I'm set all set thank you thank you for your report thank um, you sir Fred uh, next we have old business um, number one is the DNCR Hampton Joint operations plan that's the department of natural and cultural resources uh, <clears throat> used to be known as dread and we dreaded this out every time we came to it but we don't do that anymore so uh, they have agreed to uh, and they have in fact signed a uh, JOP with the town they signed it on the 20th of June 2019 basically it reiterates uh, the previous JOP that was out there uh, it continues the collection of trash. It continues to pay for the trash that is collected. 
they continue to, uh, as best they can, uh, given circumstances on the road and, and with people down the beach, to pick up trash on our side of the, uh, the boulevard, uh, the, uh, the west side, and bring that to the transfer station. Uh, we don't charge them for that because they're actually doing our trash. We do charge them for everything else they bring at the given rate of 10 cents per pound, which is the same as we charge our regular citizens. Um, there are no major changes in this. In fact, there are no changes in this at all from the one we had two years ago uh, that uh, the board uh, decided not to sign because of some of the requests that they had made. Those requests are not here. There's nothing new in this. This is just a cooperative effort between the two uh, governmental units to make sure that the beach gets picked up in the summertime. That's Watch those you, things. They're they, crazy. Yeah, he was <laughs> over here. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> apparently, they're, uh, they're very hungry this year. There's a lot of them around. Uh, there's also some bug that we found in the town hall the other day that's in a red color. And if you happen to hit it, it splatters like blood all over oh, the place. So, uh, and that's, it's not blood, but it's, it's their yeah. natural Look. color when you hit them. Um, in any event, uh, this is, they're requesting that we go ahead and, and work with them during the year. Uh, we are still trying to work with them to find a way to, <coughs> excuse me, find a way to uh, take care of the, the sweepings from the beach. Um, it's pretty obvious they're gonna have to have some sort of a tremble or screen. Uh, in order to take the sand out of it so that it can be dumped directly into the transfer station. Uh, that would eliminate the large roll-off boxes that they're keeping down the beach, which do, in fact, have a rather odysseous content to them. Um, and they could bring it right straight to the transfer station, we'll weigh it, and they could pay the tonnage uh, for the tipping directly off to the turnkey landfill. Uh, but that has not been worked out yet. There are some bugs that are in that, <clears throat> no pun intended. Uh, and the, there's some there's some money that will have to be spent by the state to do this, and I don't believe they're in the position at the moment to do that. But they are exploring it. Um, and as long as we're talking about the state, I, earlier this evening uh, there was a comment made in public comment about allowing parking uh, all year round. <clears throat> we don't uh, control that. Uh, the this Department of uh, uh, in charge of this operation, in fact, went to the legislature and had, had the administrative regulations changed so they can now charge all year long no. for parking at the beach. No. Uh, during the summertime, or what we call the summer months, it's $2 an hour. For the remainder of the year, it's $1 an hour. Uh, they have decided so far not to charge that dollar an hour uh, starting on October 1st, but they have the right to do that. And I know there's been some comment about the fact that they we're thinking about it, but have not, in fact, done it yet. Mm. So we're hoping that does not happen, but we don't control that. That's something that's done by a committee in the legislature and the department in question. So I just want to make sure that's sort of clear to everybody that we really don't have a lot of say in that, although we can voice our opinion, and we did tonight, that we really don't want to have the wintertime parking interfered with because it's difficult. It's impossible for us to allow parking on the streets and mm. still be able to plow them. So that's, that's it, sir. I saw on um, TV tonight that they've just changed the parking in Boston yeah. to 275 yes. an hour for the meters for most of Boston. If you're in areas like the seaport, it's 375. Yeah, right. But I think the interesting thing about it is back when, well, when I used to go to Boston more often, and I always parked on the streets, it used to be the same exact rate in Hampton as it was in Boston. Yeah. So we're still only charging two dollars. I mean, for that the state is charging, charging two dollars an, an hour. So we're still <clears throat> lower than what it is on the side streets of Boston. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, no question yeah. about that. So that's interesting. Uh, questions, Mary Louise. Joint operations plan, right? Yes. I have had it with the state of New Hampshire, uh, Fred. I think that when we last met, what, 17th of June, whatever it was, um, that you mentioned something about the state acknowledging that it owns the sidewalks on the west side of 1A, and they're going to do some wonderful things to the sidewalks. Well, is that wonderful is a, <laughs> not necessarily a word of art in this case. They did send a letter to uh, 
to the town indicating that they are going to do construction on all the west west side and east side sidewalks that belong to them right that they are their property and they are making them all handicapped accessible in accordance with ADA requirements. Right. So we, we're thinking of framing that letter because they are admitting now that the sidewalks, in fact, belong to the state and not the town. Well, and I'm uh, expanding that because... Because that doesn't have anything to do with this particular agreement or this agency. Well, I refuse to have anything to do with this joint operations plan, and I want to explain it. First of all... Uh, there was a big mess, I think it was the last uh, Sunday or uh, anyway, last week sometime. Ago Sunday. It was a Sunday? Yeah. yeah. And uh, public works employees were called in to clean up the mess at the state park. I hope we never have our employees cleaning anything up at that state park. That is not our responsibility. And our public works department is already stretched to its limit. Uh, this, the representatives from the state of New Hampshire once again didn't come down and sit down and talk to us uh, face to face. They threw this together. I've had it with the state. I want the state to dispose of its own waste like it does in all of the other state parks. They need to hire a contractor to dispose of the state waste. I do not want to see that going through the, the Public Works Department. I want Public Works have, to have nothing to do with state of New Hampshire waste. And I refuse to have anything to do with this train <laughs> operations plan. In addition, on page seven, police, police patrols on Hampton Beach. The state will continue to permit the town of Hampton Police Department to utilize motorized patrol vehicles on Hampton Beach and within the Hampton Beach State Park. The town shall not charge the state for the town's cost of these patrols. Without charge to the town, state personnel shall provide any requested assistance to police personnel in the discharge of their official duties. This provision does not limit or restrict any enforcement or future agreements between the state of New Hampshire and the town of Hampton regarding the acceptance or agreements permitted by state laws regarding police paroles and procedures at Hampton Beach State Park. I think it's an insult to the taxpayers of this community to have Hampton Police Department employees enforcing whatever they enforce at that state park. State parks should be serviced by state police. I believe in every other park in the state of New Hampshire, the state police are the legal authorities. I realize that after Chief Wren left, Apparently the Hampton Police Department wanted to be nice or something and uh, took over the um, law enforcement at the state park. I think that is absolutely unacceptable. State police should be assigned to every state park, including the Hampton Beach State Park. And I refuse to have anything to do with this agreement. Regina. Okay, I want to um, clarify something about a week ago Sunday. A week ago Sunday, I went for early morning bicycle ride. No, it must have been, yeah, Sunday, and it was extremely busy. It was Monday morning, so it had happened the Sunday. Mm -hmm. And the beach was immaculate. It was probably about 8.30, 9 o'clock on Monday morning. So I was like, wow, this place looks great. Everyone's doing a great job. Huh. Now, I had already had an appointment because I had some questions for Chris and Jen about some of the projects coming up and what some of their warrant articles are going to be. So I went down to go talk to them about that and the both of them together. And I was telling them how I was down the beach and they're like, oh no, <laughs> this is what happened. Because I know I was at the state parks meeting that they had in, I think it was in May. And there was a new lady and I can't, Meredith, has, has someone that's responsible for the maintenance, and I know she's probably doing a great job, and it's her first year, but what had happened was they were bringing the trash to the transfer station at night, and it got, it was all full. So instead of 
they decided to leave it in the barrels. And then, so the next day when our public works guys came in, there was all these barrels that had overfilling trash. Uh. So, you know, Chris and Jen were like, you know, not a big deal, it was a miscommunication. We talked to both of them and then now they like know that even if it's, you know, you can leave the trash <laughs> on the floor at the, land, at the transfer station because it's better than leaving it in the barrels down the beach. Mm. But the whole point of it is, is that it's always us. We're always the ones, whether it be yep. police, fire, public works, which is in dire need of more help and more hands. I mean, it's the last thing they need. Now, I've been told by residents who, you know, a lot of people tell me things and they don't want to be known. At functions I go to throughout town, I believe someone told me it was that when they did the opening for Cornerstone, that it's not the first time. This is a resident that lives down the beach. Our public works guys, a lot of the times, mm -hmm. are the ones picking up that trash yep. on the west side. Yep. So this agreement, which was supposed to start in April 1st, and I mean, it's already July 1st, so I mean, two months have already gone by, is just not, it's not right. It's the same exact thing to answer Charlie Preston as we always had, and I would like to get him a copy of this at some point. Yep. But um, the beach rakings, I guess that's still being addressed. The South Beach State Park, Sunday, that same Sunday, I was again, before I went to Ipswich to visit family, I went for my daily ride down the beach and the worst day of traffic. Never seen it like that before in my life. Used to be a good amount every day. I gotta say, the traffic down there is nothing compared to what it's been, what it used to be. But um, the bridge was awful. I know friends that worked at Ocean Walk, it took them to get from Catalano's and Seabrook over to Ocean Walk over an hour. And my number one, now you can call it facts what you want to call it, but my number one spy down there, I went to go visit her, and she sits there and watches it every single morning. <laughs> and she was told, as we all were, that went to the State Parks meeting in May, that they were gonna have two people there on busy days to get that traffic in and out. Now I know we also had an issue with, I think, a cruiser could they had to actually drive on the other side of one lane, on the other side of 1A because the traffic was so backed up. Yeah. Now that was coming from the other way. But what people don't realize is when it's jam packed, and I mean, we can only have so many police. You know, I mean, I'm sure that Sawyer has as many on as he possibly can, but why should we have to pay for it all? Right. We right. have $40,000 and an $800,000 support services budget. Mm -hmm. And these are all numbers. I'm just talking in numbers. Yep. You can call it anger. You can call it whatever you want. Yep. But the taxpayers are spending all the money down there. And no one's helping us. And we get nothing out of this. We don't get state troopers anymore. I go to Laconia. I go to Kingston. I go to all these places in New Hampshire mm -hmm. that have events. Yep. And the state is all over the place. Yep. And it used to be like that down on beach. It was all Hampton and it was all state troopers. Yep. So maybe financially the state's not gonna give us any money, but can they give us some of their guys mm -hmm. again? Because we really need them. Because we're spending way too much money down there and we're not seeing anything. You yep. know, 1.5, 1.6 million dollars out of here every yep. year. We don't see any of it. Yep. I mean, this is, I'm not gonna sign this. I mean, it's just, it's a joke. I mean, two months of the summer have already gone by. Yeah, and it was, they were, there hasn't been that much for them to do down there up until a couple of weeks ago when it started to get warm. So if they have operational issues, I understand. And I know Meredith works their hardest. They all do down there. I see them every single day. But it's not them. It's the people that are telling them what to do. Yeah. That's where the problem is. And something's got to change because I've gone down there every day. I work down there. Hot nut and all those guys, you know, I know what they do. You know, I see him taking his extra bins in his own pickup truck every day to go to the transfer station. Mm -hmm. But they, people got to understand when you sit at this table and you've seen what I've seen is an independent person coming in that's lived in this town her whole life. If we don't change the way we've been doing things, mm -hmm. no one's going to be able to afford to live here unless you can live in an $800,000 house. Yep. So I really hope that the state of New Hampshire can realize that 
we want to work with them, but they're making it really hard on us most of the time. Were you going to say something, Fred? It looked like you were going to say something. Well, yes, I am, Mr. Chairman. And, and <clears throat> that we've had some problems down there. There's no question about that. Uh, I know that uh, this past week uh, we had some problems with pick up of material. Uh, there is an agreement here the state is supposed to pick up the material at night on the west side of Ocean Boulevard in addition to the material in their own facilities on the east side. Uh, we asked some questions about that because it wasn't picked up and we ended up picking a lot of it up ourselves as, a t as the town. Mm -hmm. uh, it seems that um, they had uh, one night they had so many people down there that they couldn't get it picked up in time so when nine o'clock came payroll was shut off everything was parked left on the trucks what was collected the other stuff was not collected and everybody was sent home. You should not be like that. Uh, I understand, and I, because I worked with certain people down there uh, for a number of years, and uh, that stuff was picked up come you know what or high water. Um, we have a problem this Fourth of July weekend, and we've been talking with the state mm -hmm. uh, because we want to make sure that these things don't happen again. And the only way we're going to be assured of that is that we're going to be putting people on on the Fourth of July at their holiday pay plus time and a half to make sure that the west side trash is picked up. In the late in the early evening not during fireworks time but before that happens and afterwards if it's necessary because we just <clears throat> do not want to have the beach in a shambles come the following morning it it's they have hired new people they have them down there <clears throat> they are uh, not American citizens and our, our residents but they're restricted as the amount of time they can work and when that special hour or time comes along they're told to stop Put your stuff away and go home. Don't do any more work. If the material has not been picked up, it has not been picked up and won't be until the following day if, in fact, they have drivers and so forth to operate the equipment to pick it up. So we're, we're looking at that. Um, I don't disagree to some respect that if they can't solve their problem and we're trying to push them to do that, then uh, they need to take care of their own trash 100%. Thank you. But that's going to mean that on the west side, we are going to pick up that trash until midnight every night in the summertime. I thought they own the west side. They do. Well, they, they don't own the businesses, and that's where the material comes from. And there are barrels that are out there, not theirs. Um, it's a sort of a special relationship that we have with them yeah. <clears throat> uh, if we want them to cooperate with us because their crews are on till late at night and pick up the material then we have to try to work with them to pick up the slack so things don't fall to pieces which is how it's been done for years forever right yeah but they they don't have the personnel and they don't have the people who are trained and they don't have um, the money to run them after I, I understand the other night they closed down at nine Good. That, that may be wrong, but that's what I was told. <clears throat> Normally, it's 11 o'clock when they shut everything down, yeah. and, and I, that's been going on for years and years Supposedly and years. Supposedly, they have a big shortage of help. They do have a shortage of help, and it's new help, people who have not been here before. Mm. Uh, they are mostly from China, and they are uh, people <laughs> of a, a slightly smaller stature. Lifeguards. So it's difficult <laughs> to throw some of the material to places they need to throw yeah. it. Uh, with the regards to the state police, there was an effort in the legislature to remove 100% of all the funding for state police officers coming to Hampton Beach. The commissioner went to bat for us. He has the money. The problem is he doesn't have enough personnel from time to time. Uh. And when he has the personnel, he has promised us that they will be here. Huh. They don't have jurisdiction to come here under state law because we have more than 3,000 residents in this town. Only the chief of police can authorize them to come in, and he does authorize them to come in to yeah. help him with regards to enforcement at the beach. Mm. And the commissioner and the deputy commissioner have been very, very supportive of getting people, as many people as they can, to come down here and help us. And they did go to the legislature and ask for the support. Mm. The legislature gave them the money to allow it to happen, provided he has the personnel on the days that he needs them to come down yeah. here. So I think. Pretty much we've, we've gained a lot of ground on that from one year where they had zero dollars. We're back to where we were five and six years ago with uh, sufficient funds to, to do what we need to do. We had a, a huge discussion with the state three or four years ago uh, because of a traffic citation that was handed out to a person who parked in a handicapped zone on state property. 
and uh, the Attorney General's office was so irate about this that they actually hired an outside attorney and took the case all the way to the state Supreme Court to have the ticket abolished. Mm -hmm. And they pointed out to us that under state law, we have no authority on the beach. Absolutely none of us were asked to have the, to, to do a particular function. So we do not go on the beach unless we are asked to do that or we see a crime in, in being committed, in which case we take care of it because it's a violation of state law. I'm not sure enforcing. I understand what you just said about that, uh, the ticket. There was a ticket issued by one of our police officers for parking, uh, for violation of law, for parking in a handicapped spot without a handicapped plate yeah. by a non-handicapped person. So yeah. our, st our policeman parked in it? No, not our policeman. No, this was, a, this was an employee of the state who uh, parked in it. And uh, we, we issued gave it, them a ticket. We gave them a ticket. And the state spent the money to hire a, a private law firm to take the ticket all the way to the state Supreme Court to make sure this doesn't happen again. Mm -hmm. So it got to be very confusing. It got to be very upsetting to our people. Mm -hmm. uh, we lost the ticket, obviously, because the court ruled we had no jurisdiction there to give the ticket. It was on state property. <laughs> state officers should have done that. Mm -hmm. um, but the department didn't see it that way. That employee is no longer there, so we don't have that yeah. problem anymore. Uh, and we've been trying to work around these various problems with the, de with the department. I think we're making good progress. I think the problem is that they don't have the funds because the funds are being siphoned off to other places to run other parks and other oh, facilities. My. So they need more money, they need more equipment, mm. and they're not getting it in order to help themselves. Yeah. Fred, why okay, are we the Let's have everybody you speak, will be please. Why are we the you only state park? You will be recognized after everyone's had a chance to talk. So all right. please wait your but turn. Have... Mr. Waddell. Yeah, first of all, I'm very uncomfortable talking about ethnicity of, of, of various people, workers. I, th I think that should be left out of any discussion we yep. have. I mean, I, I know it just means it, but I, I'm not uncomfortable with it just personally myself, so I'm saying that. I'm just making that statement. The other thing I'm saying is, do you recommend or not recommend that we sign this? Now, we do have the issue, as you said, of the trash being picked up at night. Right. So what is your rec – and I understand the – all the problems that we have with the state, and I understand that totally, and, and that there are different departments, so there's not just one department that That's you're correct. dealing with. You're dealing with Department of Transportation, you're dealing with Natural Resources, you're dealing with a whole bunch, you're dealing with state police, and those are all separate departments. So my, what I'm asking is, do you recommend this joint operations plan? I recommend that you approve it so that we can have a basis to work with them on it. It needs to be approved, improved, <coughs> And there's no question about that. But if you don't approve it, we have no basis to work with them at all. Okay, and this was you. my question also. Thank you. Any other questions? No, nope, that answered my question. And to Presti. That answered my okay. question, thank you. Mrs. Wolseley. Why are we the only state park in the state of New Hampshire where the state does not pay a private hauler to take away its confounded waste? Why are we stuck? Do we stuck? know that as a fact, Mr. Uh, Walsh? Oh, I've worked on another a number of communities, and I don't know of any of those communities that, in fact, take care of the trash for the state parks or other facilities, okay? Um, I think the reason that we do that, and we do that here, is because prior boards of selectmen decided to do that, and they decided to do it with the state, and the state expects us to do it now. Um, huh. It's, it's not necessarily a pleasant task, but it keeps our beach clean and it keeps the people who own property at the beachfront and the businesses at the beachfront in business. Because if we make it look like a dump, nobody's going to come to participate at Hampton Beach. But the state owns that beach and they derive the revenues from that beach. And we are killing our public works department with all this nonsense. Well, we Do should we have had that discussion in 1933. Well. Do we have any motions? I'll have a motion that we sign the JOP. I'll a second. second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Three. Opposed. One opposed. I'll abstain from that. Okay. Abstain. All right. So I won't pass this over here for signature. <laughs> Which basically means you don't the vote on either side. Well, that's I'm not going to vote against the board. That's all I do. I didn't well, vote against you should always don't feel like you have to do that. You should make your own decision. 
Were you still under the town manager's report? Uh, no. Oh, they moved uh, on. Why not? Well, uh, because we've been talking about old business, not the town manager's report. We've already finished with that about 15 minutes ago. Um, so <laughs> next, we are moving on to the franchise warrant article discussion. I didn't put it on the agenda, Mr. Okay. Chairman, so well, I can't. <laughs> both Mrs. Wolseley and Regina wanted it on the agenda, I so that's why it's there. So would you ladies like to talk about what you wanted to bring forward? Yeah, definitely. I think that, um, one, we have too much money going into that cable fund, and I think that maybe we should prepare a warrant article to give some of that back to either the town or just cut the fee in half. But I don't. I mean, I don't have anything prepared for a warrant mm -hmm. article. But I definitely think that we need to do something yeah. because we have all this money going in there, and even though there's less people on cable, the people that are paying it are getting less services. There's less channels. You know, we're all working toward mm -hmm. so the uh, the. I mean, what Christy and Dylan have done is awesome as far as the website goes, and you know, I know the streamlining is a very good quality. But the people paying the fee, what are they actually? What are they getting? Doesn't it seems like people that aren't even paying a fee are able to use Comcast? And I mean, I know Channel 22 does a great job, but the money is an issue. It's too much money going in there. We've done the upgrades. We gave the school the quarter of a million dollars. I think it's time that we cut back the money that we have going into that fund. Now, how it's been done in the past, ever since the fund was established, I'm sure is that it's been done through an agreement, a contract, that uh, we is, is negotiated with a lawyer. Now, where do we stand in those negotiations? Has we, a lawyer... We, the, the, hmm? Mark has been so busy. It's not Mark. We've no, 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 no. Mark, Mark is, is contacting one for uh, me. Yeah. And he has been so right. busy, he has not had time to do that. Yeah. Now, well, I just I, wanna... I agree 100% on the franchise fee, yeah. except let's wait. August 1st, the FCC, I believe, is voting on whether there, there will be no franchise fee at That's all correct. for mm. anything. Oh. And mm. the, one of the reasons that they're doing that is because municipalities have been using the fee to reduce tax <coughs> for purposes, not the channel. Oh. If it were reduced a half percent, half in half, with the two channels, there would not be enough money to run the two channels. People have asked for expanded, they've asked for the trash committee to be uh, Televised that entails money mm -hmm. to hire people to come in and do it. So you, you mm -hmm. have to realize if you want a channel 22, you want a channel 13, it costs money. Now, if they would, people would just give the chance to finish the contract, finish what we're doing, then we can talk about that oh. at the end. Yeah. So but I don't when, know what the rush is. Where do we stand is. about the contract? That's my question. Oh, that. We've done the public survey. We've got all that yeah. together, and we're waiting to get together with a lawyer to have a lawyer yeah. look over the contract. And so, at right. what time? What was the time period? Twenty one. What? What uh, is that? Okay. Twenty one. Two thousand twenty one. No, no, no. The, um, what you just mentioned about the franchise fee being abolished. When was that? August first. Uh, August first. August first. Supposed to. Yeah. Vote. Yes. I just wanted to say that before we can change any of this, we have to renegotiate another contract. We just can't do it on our own. Okay. And when we start to renegotiate it, the last time it took six years. Wow. Yeah. So <laughs> it's not going to happen overnight, and I doubt if it's going to happen in time for a Warren article. But what's your opinion of that, Mr. Well, I know that we well, had. Uh, and I, I came here at the time you were negotiating a new contract, so yeah. <clears throat> we went through that process. Uh, I believe, with all the lobbying that's going on in Washington, D.C., with the Federal Communications Commission, that what's going to happen here is that you're going to have no problem. There won't be any money whatsoever coming uh. out of the franchise holders, okay? <clears throat> in which case, you're going to have to appropriate money from, from property taxes. Right. The reason for all that is exactly what we just heard, and that is the towns were charging as much as they possibly could and then taking the money and deferring property taxes or uh, other taxes with yeah. it, which is against federal law. Uh, so I, I have a good feeling, because that hasn't stopped in a lot of places, that in fact this money is going to go away and people in town will receive a, a reduction in their bill by that amount of percentage, okay. whatever they're paying off of their bill yeah. that's included. Um, I don't really want to see us raise more taxes 
to put channel 22 on, but I'm probably that's going to have to be a warrant article. And if it fails, there won't be a channel 22 or a channel 13. It'll mm -hmm. just be gone. Yeah. And our, the equipment we own will be shut down. So uh, I agree that it should be decreased. I can't tell you what the decrease should be. I think we need to sit down and do an effective budget, mm -hmm. find out what that pro rata cost is, and then apportion that out in two different ways. What should it be if we charge it to the cable users, who are the ones who receive the service, mm -hmm. and what, would, what would, should we charge if it has to be uh, done by appropriation, by taxation? Yeah. Uh, so people will know both sides of the coin and may try to make a decision on what should be done Assuming the Federal Communications Commission does not eliminate that from all the, all the cable contracts. If the FCC says we can't collect it effective the day they sign that order, we will receive no more money. Yeah, okay. Yeah, but we don't know that's going to happen, actually. We, we don't know until it happens. Uh, no, they, but we from have what I've prepared. seen with what's happening in Washington, they've been very supportive of the cable uh, companies. Hmm. And that's why I think it's going to pass, because the cable companies don't want this. <laughs> They're taking a lot of heat yeah. for it. Well, I, it appears we're just going to have to wait. Yeah. Uh, we're in a waiting yeah. game. But I think that we need to make sure that we at least have representation, which mm -hmm. is expensive. I think the last time it was around $45,000. It was very heavy. That we paid. Yeah. Wow. Uh, and we paid it more than one year. Yes. And so this is a big expense. We need to make sure that we're prepared going into the last six months that we have someone because once they do retain a lawyer, that's when the real waiting game will start. That's true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's well, we true. just so, gave away two hundred and fifty-five thousand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, uh, we really can't work on. You know, we'll keep it in mind that it's yeah. a possible warrant article. Yeah. And that sounds good to everyone. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, so now we're moving to I got other one old business. Old business, yeah. Um, you've sent a letter to the representatives to be here in, in a couple of weeks. Yes, sir. That so, letter went out today. So right. So that would be a point in time if Mary Louise wants to talk about the state and the trash. And, oh yes. And stuff. That's the time to talk about it, not the time of the JOP right. coming up. It may so, take. And the reason you raise that is it may take legislation to change that. Exactly, exactly. So hopefully when they come here, they'll tell us what legislation has yeah. passed. But by that time, they'll be done with that. And uh, so it'll be good to see them in here. Thank yeah. you. That's Thank a good you. point. Okay. Um, other old business? Nope. I just have one thing. Yeah. Um, for, I got asked questions today. Whether we had the uh, thunderstorms the other day. On the Channel 22, I should have brought this when we were talking about Channel 22. That is not the emergency warnings. That's something that Comcast would do, right? That doesn't have anything to do with us. Okay. I just wanted to make sure. Yeah. yeah. All right. And probably the, um, uh, the National Weather Service. Weather service. Yeah. Yeah. They, yeah. they re re broadcast the National Weather yeah. Service alerts. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now, as it's far as other old businesses, as far as I'm concerned, we had these people that came in here tonight. Obviously, this is a hot item. I was under the impression that there was going to be a motion made here tonight. Did you have one, Mrs. Wolfson? I, I'm holding it for another evening. Okay, well, if that's the case, I think that we need to discuss about this and put this matter to rest once and for all, unless you're prepared to make a meeting, to, I mean, make a motion tonight. People are waiting for this to be solved. So you're not prepared to make a motion that you discussed? I don't intend to make a motion this okay. evening. Okay, well then, I guess we need to go forward with, um, uh, tell, you know, saying to the public, telling people that we, um, back when these contracts were first discussed, there were, I can't remember right now how many meetings that we had with lawyers. Lawyers looked into everything from every angle, and it was determined that everything was, we were within rights to do everything that was done, everything was legal, there were no problems. We met with a lawyer again today, and the lawyer also told us that we are, um, we have no problems uh, with the contracts that we had. Uh, we could um, confirm them again tonight, but she told us there's really no need to, uh, for us to do that because this board has voted, and we have, like I said about Mr. Tinius mentioning 
um, that about how we he had said we had reconsidered. We've never reconsidered. Um, every you know the uh, the the board has been in favor of what has already been done. So effectively, from what I can understand and talk to all the lawyers that we talked, including the new lawyers we talked to today, there is no problem with any of these contracts. And unless someone's prepared to make a motion, um, we're going forward with everything that's been done up until this time. I there believe were... council also said that if the Board of Selectmen takes an action, they can rescind their own action at a later date. Mm -hmm. Well, um, first of all, all five of, of the members of the board have voted uh, in the positive to do what's been done so far. Mm -hmm. Each person, when you vote for something in a positive way, you always have the ability to ask that it be redone, or you could yeah. ask for everything to be reconsidered. Yeah. No one has done that, which would have been the proper way to do it. Yeah. If you voted positive for something, you could have asked at any time to have it reconsidered. I, You've not done that, and I did nobody not, else has. I did not vote. I was not on the board at the time the contracts were taken care of in 2017. I had no uh, interest in those contracts. Well, then you have an interest right now if you want to make a motion. But if no, you don't, I, we're going to move forward. This I, board I can, has already spoken. I can count, and I have made my uh, concerns quite clear. Well, this board has spoken, and we're going forward with our decision unless somebody here has a problem. And we're all very supportive of um, Mr. Welch. We're very supportive of Mr. Sullivan. And so we are going forward with the agreements that have been made. As the lawyer extra uh, told us today, the only way that this could be done is if there is an agreement to pay uh, if these contracts are not gone forward with. And from, what the from the feeling I'm getting from the board here, there is no <laughs> desire to pay that money out. Did I, you have any desire I, to pay it out? No, where I am, so I was not party to the individuals who put that together. I will say that I agree with your comment uh, on uh, supporting Mr. Welch, but I do not support your other comment. Okay, that's fine. But this board is now marching forward with the decisions that have been made in the past. Okay, moving to new business. I will um, so move the acceptance of the New Hampshire Homeland Security Program we already did grant that. We already did that. Did that we did that with How the about would you? Uh, we do that? Oh, oh, Ms. okay. Who, then Mr. Welch? Would you like to talk about the dog warrant? Ah, uh, well, <laughs> I don't really want to, but this I will, Mr. Item. Chairman. It's a really hot item. It's required by law. Yeah. Uh, not that we spend a lot of time uh, arresting people or imprisoning dogs or anything else. Uh, the purpose here is in fact to authorize the warrant so that yeah. the town can issue the requirements contained within the warrant in the form of written notices. Yeah. So and it, it really sets up a system, it, it confirms a system that is currently set within law. Um, and I, I, I hate to put these things out, but they're required. Uh, you, if you own a couple of dogs, you could end up with a multi-hundred dollar dog fee uh, and, and end up having to pay it uh, because you have the dog. Yeah. And it's so yeah. much simpler just to drop in and pay the, the five or six yeah. or seven dollars at the beginning of the process before we get to this point uh, yeah. on July 1st of each year and just have it done with. Right. You also have passed regulations that says if somebody has not paid their dog license from that point forward, they can't receive any, any permits in the town for uh, use of the transfer station or things of mm -hmm. that nature. So we don't want to do that, but the law requires us to do something of that vein in order to collect it. Now, so, if a dog is passed away? Dog is passed away, you need evidence. And, and the reason I say that is because we used to take people's word for it. <laughs> we had a person come in and tell us that, in fact, their dog had passed away. They didn't need to pay the fee, and the warrant for them was disposed of. And the following year, they came in and, and registered the same dog. <laughs> well, that's... And what if the person's passed away? 
Well, then I guess the dog's in charge. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Will you accept a motion to uh, go ahead and accept the 2019 Dodd warrant? It is well done. I'll second it. Please All please. those in favor? Unanimous. We are they doing? Work. Are they trying to work it out? Are they doing King Dog or anything again this year? They that, did that. They, they did that. that. That's, oh, they did that's, that's, yeah. That comes at the beginning of the process. I'll, right. I'll pass this up to Sticky. Cute little the dog. Cutest dog. Uh, oh my God. Cutest dog in town. Yeah. yeah there you go. Yeah. Um, now we have closing comments. Do we have any closing comments this evening? I would just like to uh, say that. Um, I'm so looking forward that we've passed, we've moved on from this issue because it has never been an issue here for the board. Uh, uh, m maybe some members of the board, but the voting majority has always supported exactly what has been done so far. And um, we, we will have to move forward um, in other ways as time goes on, but these contracts uh, are good until um, July of 2020. And um, so uh, I know that um, uh, Max uh, asked me a month ago, he called and asked if, there, if we thought the board was dysfunctional. And in my opinion, as I told him, and I caught when Regina commented tonight and said that the board isn't dysfunctional, which was also my answer. We've had, there's always pro little problems that go on and on, but in no, at no time did I feel that anything has been dysfunctional as far as the way town business has been conducted. Things right now, as far as I'm concerned, are the best that I've seen. And um, I'm not a big believer in how wonderful the economy is. I think it's wonderful for some people, but it's not wonderful for everybody. But I will say, I see things in a better light here in Hampton than I've seen ever before. Thank you. Mrs. Wolsey. And I will say that if the town has in place a personnel policy, I would expect the selectmen of the town to abide by the personnel policy. I just, I just to touch on what you said too, I got that same call by Max and yeah, Rick, I had the same answer as you. I mean, I think if you look at it, most of the time we agree on things, so. Well, I liked it when he didn't ask me twice because he, <laughs> he, he accepted my answer and then, and I felt very strong that I was correct when I said that and that's why I appreciated hearing you say it tonight too. Before, Is, we, before yeah? we leave, can we? I need to get that one signed too. Do we need um, to? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I would appreciate it if the board, if you have no other comments, to the, a motion to enter into a non public session under RSA 91 hyphen capital A colon 3 Roman 2 small e uh, litigation. I will so move. Second. All those in favor? And we need a, a roll call on yes. that. I'm uh, sorry. Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you, Channel 22. Thank you, Thank you. Thanks, Max. <laughs> Two more.